about uh, Zebra's core, and actually this will be turned on. So we have perspective, we have floor, we have all the cam view and the thumbnails and stuff like that turned on. And this is Zebra's core. If you missed it, let's go back here to my YouTube channel. Uh, we did uh, Zebra's core mini last time. And if you want to know the difference between those two, you have uh, Zebra's core mini is pretty pared down. In fact, let me go ahead and just open it real quick. Uh, we're not going to go deep into it um, because you really can't go deep into Zebra's core mini. The whole point of it is just to be a uh, you know, bare bones uh, sculpting package. If it'll let me open it, did I not click it? Or does it not let me have ZBrush Core open and ZBrush Core Mini open at the same time? I guess not. Here we go. Okay. Um, so here's ZBrush Core Mini that we're uh, dealing with, not dealing with, that we were using last time. And I think the, the thing that kind of threw me the most is that Sculptress Pro is always turned on. And of course, that's going to be the automatic tessellation that you're going to get. Um, it's okay. Uh, and also not being able to put in hotkeys. Uh, so the Sculptors Pro performance was fine. You just have to make sure once once I had to once I get up to a certain amount, I had to go in here and hit low and basically decimate my object down. Uh, so it was it was okay, uh, but uh, the my brush strokes were a little bit. Uh, I, I wasn't quite used to it. But anyway, it's free. You can go through as long as you have a Pixelogic account. You can get ZBrush Core Mini and you're good to go. And like I said, it's got sculpting brushes. You can open and save things. You can export things to, as OBJ and send those to your favorite 3D printing slicer, all that good stuff. So anyway, that was ZBrush Core Mini. Let's load up ZBrush Core. And the first thing I want to do with ZBrush Core is go over what's new, because there's actually some really cool new stuff in here. Uh, oh, and you know, that's interesting too. So I, here's, here's what we're going to do. So now you see a giant ZBrush Core thing here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this up so you guys can see it on your screen. Yoink. Something like that. Does that look right? Uh, okay. So this is ZBrush 20, ZBrush Core 21.6.2. The first thing I'm going to do is set this right in my screen here. You know, and we don't even need this. We can go. You guys don't need to see all that. We'll get every square millimeter out of this screen we can. There we go. Uh, once I have that, I'm going to go here to preferences. Uh, do, 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 config, store config, okay, we'll close it down, and then next time I load it up, it should pop right where I left it. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for the kind words everybody, I love starting off my morning with people not yelling at me, it's so nice, glad the videos are helping, and we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully have a helpful video here, uh, this is ZBrush Core, so I don't know how popular this is, or how much this is out there, but ZBrush Core is going to be a pared down version of ZBrush. So ZBrush Core Mini was super pared down. This one's a little pared down, but it's also got a lot of stuff in there too. So let's have a little bit of fun with that. It's going to start, at least it started me off with uh, just a polysphere that I can sculpt on. I don't have to go in here and say make poly mesh 3D, but you can start with primitives in here. So that's kind of neat. You can go in here to cylinder um, and this is a primitive. So essentially here's my tool palette, just like in big ZBrush. Uh, all of these are going to be primitives except for this PolyMesh 3D and this Z-Sphere and this PolySphere. So any of these three I choose are going to act and behave a little bit differently. Any of these ones are going to be my primitives. And like, for instance, I can go down here and initialize. And then I can like pop in a little inner radius here, change my H divides and V divides uh, to get exactly what I want uh, for my primitives. And then when I'm ready to sculpt on it or start modeling on it, wait, do we have... Oh, nosy brush, nosy modeler in here. Well, okay, we can get around that uh, a little bit. <laughs> so once I'm ready to start modifying this or dynameshing it or sculpting on it, we can go in here to make PolyMesh 3D. And now it's a PolyMesh 3D. <clears throat> this one doesn't have ZBrushes initialized where you can go through here and do the Q cube and the Q grid and stuff like that. That's not in here. But, you know, again, there, there's ways around that. So we have our polysphere here. We're able to sculpt and Sculptress Pro is able to be activate and deactivate. You see the hotkey for that is backslash, uh, which is great. So that way I can use it when I need it and then turn it off when I don't need it. So this is probably gonna feel a lot better for me uh, being a ZBrush user, uh, old school ZBrush user, a little bit more what I'm used to. Uh, I also had uh, my thumbnail, my cam view off. Underneath preferences, cam view and thumbnail, that's where you can turn that off and on. This is just to orient yourself in space. 
So here's Z forward Y up as most things are in ZBrush, as all things are in ZBrush, and then th uh, other programs like Maya uh, follow that same convention. And then there's your thumbnail here. So as we make um, changes to our object, you can go through there and be evaluating your silhouette. Uh, you can also click and drag that just like in big ZBrush it looks like. Uh, thumbnail, magnify, size, export your thumbnail and background. So all the same cam view um, and you can even make your own cam view in here. So in fact, I probably won't get too heavy into that, but if we go to either, let's say YouTube, playlists and art station. Um, hmm. Cam view I want to say was ZBrush 2020. Cam view and thumbnail are both ZBrush 2020. So if you want to go to ZBrush 2020, what's new? That'll walk you through uh, cam view basics, making your own custom cam view, and then also doing some zany stuff with your thumbnail. So I'll go ahead and link you guys, y'all, to my art station page here and my YouTube channel here with all my playlists. My playlists are the same thing. Uh, you won't see my um, Madonna Lucky Star liked videos playlist, but <laughs> you can see the rest of these, I believe. Um, Go ahead and pop that in there too. And then you can go and hunt down ZBrush 2020, what's new, ZBrush 2021, all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and punch that down there. Um, cool, make more Houdini tutorials. Oh, I wish I was smart enough to do that. One day I'll be smart. No, probably not. But if you do want some, some Houdini tutorials, I do have that. Um, for the rest of you, so we have this Houdini Auto Game Res and then this uh, Auto Game Dev tool set uh, where we go into some Houdini, basic Houdini functionality. Cool, <laughs> hello. Uh, is the matte cap white skin shader for best for a cartoon render? Um, yeah, and speaking of, we have that in here. I do want to look at something. So I'm going to be kind of learning Zebra's Core right along with you because uh, I don't use it that much. But I do want to check some stuff out. So if we go in here, render, and we don't have a wax preview in here. Uh, we do have lights, so you can sometimes fake. You can kind of fake an SSS if you go in here, and you can kind of maybe punch a little, little red into that Fresnel here. So if we go in here to light intensity, drop that intensity down. So you can kind of. Uh, let me see, do we have material settings? Mm, not a lot of them, in fact, zero of them. Uh, this is where you can, in ZBrush, you could kind of fake a little bit of SSS or it go into the wax preview. In here, eh, not so much, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. Uh, but yeah, for a stylized render, uh, Skin Shader 4 works fine. In fact, I forgot I did, speaking of stylized, I did this series on ArtStation. So if you have an ArtStation uh, learning, uh, access to ArtStation Learning. You can go to ArtStation Learning and you can learn <clears throat> Intro to ZBrush by sculpting me as a teenager. Uh, 16 hours, whoa. Uh-oh, something just froze here. I'm just gonna disable my cam view here. Let's see. My webcam just froze. You guys can still see the <laughs> my screen moving around, right? Um, yeah, so this is the Intro to ZBrush, and as well as if you go to um, this Intro to ZBrush right here, this one's a little bit updated. This is uh, free for on YouTube. It's 50 videos, I think 10 hours of just basic stuff. Uh, so you can get started with that. Um, so some high poly to low poly in Maya Bake. High poly to low poly in Maya. Ugh. Uh, I mean, that would just be basically uh, quad draw in Maya. And then uh, I don't bake anything in Maya. I bake everything in Marmoset. So I, I wouldn't necessarily show that. I do have some stuff on that. If you go over here, oh, you know what? I think it might be in the actual product. So here in the mechanical skull uh, series, so you have the making the hard surface, the substance painter, and the rendering. I do have an entire game res, retopologize, and it, you know what? It does go into quad draw, it does go into that. So uh, I might be able to touch on that stuff if we, how, depending on how far we get in ZBrush Core today, I can maybe do some of that. I, there is no, speaking of topology, let's go back here to my, when I'm doing topology in here, I like to grab, uh, I won't be able to, but Matt Cat Pearl, drop my color down a little bit. 
uh, and then subtool append a Z sphere. Uh, however, in this case, Z sphere doesn't have any topology options in here. So uh, it does have Z remesher. So you can Z remesh here and then export that and clean that up in another program. Uh, but as far as Z spheres go, uh, you can use this as, as an armature. So if I wanted to add here, I can hit Q, X to turn on X symmetry, W to move this out like so. Let's go ahead and turn this back up here and let's go ahead and turn transparency off so I can start adding more different kinds of geo in here. Let me just grab that. There we go. So we do have uh, the ability to kind of make new geometry and then of course I can hit A to go into adaptive skin uh, which is right down here under adaptive skin and this I can turn down I can turn Dynamesh off so essentially it'll be undynamesh and then density down to one and then I'll just give you my basic geometry hit make adaptive skin that's going to throw that skin Z sphere out here in your tool group. And then we're just going to append that right back to our working subtool here. Append skin Z sphere. The Z sphere we probably don't need anymore unless you want to go back and modify it. So we'll go ahead and delete that out of our stack. And then the skin Z sphere is now just geometry. We go through here and move this around. Or if we want to just dynamesh this together, we can say take this one, uh, merge down, OK, geometry, dynamic. Dynamesh and then uh, turn down blur and then uh, control drag to redynamesh and that'll go ahead and stick those together. And that's how you can use Z spheres and ZBrush core. No topology uh, capabilities, but at least you can, you know, you can make entire bodies and merge things down and dynamesh them together. Um, sorry, I'm going to keep trying to get caught up over here. A spaceship today. Well, we can try. We have a little bit limited capabilities in here. Uh, well, do I have that? Oh, uh, you know what? I want to say hmm. I did I did do that. It's, it's on my ZBrush for ideation. I do a little bit of spaceship, spaceship stuff, but not really anything worthwhile. Uh, it's basically the making of this thing, give or take. Although not, not really anything worth writing home about. So definitely don't get that series if you want to learn how to make a spaceship. I'll have to do something on that uh, on its own. Uh, <laughs> I am tired too, man. So, but it's Thursday, right? I stream on Thursdays. <clears throat> Good. Okay, so uh, yeah, we got a little uh, cute little cat guy here. So, oh, here's another thing too. So underneath our stroke menu, we have a lazy mouse. So we can tap L to turn that on and off. Uh, when I'm using my standard brush, I'll usually just have that off. And in fact, I'll go in here to my lazy mouse and then crank my lazy radius up just a bit. So if I ever want my lazy radius on for my standard brush, I can go turn it on and then tap L to turn it off. So that way, um, I'm only using my lazy my lazy brush uh, when I need it. And when I'm just using my standard brush, especially if I want to do like dotty strokes or anything like that, um, I can just do that. So. We can do this. We can also, you also notice we have hotkeys. So I have all my hotkeys stored in here. Debian standard, damn standard, and uh, clay buildup. And there's not a ton of brushes in here, but there's, it's all the ones I really use a lot. So they're all in here. Uh, and we got some new ones we want to talk about too. So we'll go in here and I'll do a quick inflate. And uh, yeah, this already feels better. I could probably, from a lot of what I do day to day, I could probably get away with uh, ZBrush Core. And in fact, BI Brush Insert, or hell, I got it assigned to a hotkey here, I think. Oh, maybe not. Uh, brush Insert Primitives, let's do that. So I'm gonna go in here and assign a hotkey, Insert Primitives, hold down Control, Alt, Tap, and then do Alt, E. I'm gonna assign that there. And of course, I wanna go in here to hotkeys and just hit Store. Anytime I, I do that, and that'll store my ZBrush Core hotkey. So now you can just go Alt, E. And, uh, and then I can hit M on my keyboard, or I can go up here and get what I want. And I'm just gonna grab a polysphere, and I'm just gonna put in some eyeballs. And then uh, I don't, there's no way to make a custom menu in here, I don't think. Correct me if I, you know what? I'm gonna say a lot of statements in here, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's a way to go in here to my kit. I can, I can enable customize, and I can move interface items around. So you can see, um, I put my active points over here, I got rid of those other, things that were over here. So you can go through here and drag brushes you use a lot and stick them over here. Um, and I also got rid of all the navigation stuff over on the side. So you can modify your interface, which is great. So I could put my own custom menu here and here and along the bottom here if I wanted to. Uh, but I don't have a way to make a custom menu I can assign to a hockey, like I can in a big ZBrush.
But like I said, there's plenty of ways uh, to get around that. So we're gonna go in here to split, unmask points, alt tap this eyeball, move it back into place. Uh, if we turn on, so we're gonna scale this up and it's gonna go out from the middle and towards the middle, let's go ahead and turn on L sim. So it's a local symmetry and we can just scale right down the middle and there we go. And we can also, uh, we can hit D for dynamic subdivision and that's gonna be under geometry dynamic. So that way uh, we can't poly model with Z modeler in here, but we can use transpose if we wanna poly model. Um, but you know, that's just gonna give us a preview. We hit shift D to turn that off, but you know, just kind of get a preview there. Uh, but like I said, in ZBrush Core 2021.6.2, which is what we're using, we got some new things. So we're gonna go in here to geometry, modify topology. There's now a close holes option. Um, you can also do a turntable under your movies now. So movie turntable is turned on. Uh, let's see, overlay image, title image, which means if I'm ever gonna do a movie, well, first thing, go in here to preferences, I'm turning my cam view off and then now, now I know where I am in space and I know that's the floor and I don't need my thumbnail. Uh, but in here, under the movie, we're gonna say, oh, I don't need an overlay. I don't need a logo or anything. So I'm just gonna turn that down to zero. And I don't also don't need to fade in a title or anything. It's fine if you want to, you can type in your text down here. But generally speaking, I just want the movie. So I'll put those both to zero. Um, also, I'm not gonna capture my entire ZBrush window. I just wanna capture my document right here. So that's where I'm gonna go in here to movie uh, document. And then I'm also gonna make that large because medium's gonna do an AA half. Uh, if, do we even have that in here? Yeah, right there. So it's gonna do an AA half uh, if it's set to medium. It'll give you a very nice anti-alias look, uh, but I want the full size. So I'm gonna say actual, and then over here underneath movie, large. So now that I have all that set up, I'm gonna hold down shift, uh, put this little guy in the middle here, and then let's go in here to movie, turntable, uh, limited functionality, ZBrush. Yeah, I got you. And then there's our movie. And then this is gonna keep storing movies in here. So if you wanted to like throw another object in here, uh, you know, let's grab our awesome cylinder. And then we'll go in here to movie uh, turntable. That'll give us a turntable of this one. And it should just stack those movies together. So now here's delete. If you don't like either of those, just hit delete and you're start over. If you do like this, this is where you can go in here to export. Let's turn on highest quality export. We'll just throw this right onto our desktop. Call it save. One, boop, two. And there we should have on our desktop a MPEG that we can play. Look at that. Mm -hmm -hmm. So good. So that's how you use that feature there. What else we got? Um, 3D connection mouse support. So I can go over here and I can use my 3D connection mouse to kind of go through and navigate in ZBrush Core. Uh, mesh balloon. So if you want to know, if you want to do a deep dive on mesh balloon, this is my super bloated uh, ZBrush 2021.6. This one, these ones will start off right at ZBrush 2021.1.6, which starts at video 84 of this playlist. Um, if you want the full playlist, that's the ZBrush 2021, what's new, full playlist. Scroll all the way down here. So this is where we start getting to like ZBrush 2021. This is all ZBrush 2021, like cloth and micro poly and dynamics and stuff like that. And then 2021.5, your uh, preview AO, which we have now in ZBrush Core. Uh, some other cool stuff in here. I'm trying to remember. Thick skin was, I think, the big release on that one. And then 2021.6 down here. All the cool uh, mesh, mass to mesh stuff is all in here. So if you want to deep dive on all of those features, you can. And here, if you hold down control, we can switch to mesh balloon. And then now we can use our, oh, man, that's a primitive. So let's go back to our poly meshes here. So let's alt tap here. Uh, this one, you can use mesh balloon. So you can hold down control. Um, and let's also turn off perspective here and you can make uh, mesh shapes like this. If you go to the side here and hold down control and then hold down shift, it should shoot it to the middle. And then if you don't change your camera view, you should be able to, um, you know, add, subtract. Um, oh, you know what? It didn't go to the middle. Control, hold down shift. There we go. Now it's in the middle. So yeah, you can go through here. I'll hold down control and then hold down shift before you release. And, uh, it should snap to the middle. And then of course, again, if you wanna add, don't move your camera, hold down shift. Uh, you wanna subtract, hold down alt, don't move the camera. 
and that'll uh, be your mesh balloon there just to kind of create things. And in this one, in Zebra's Core Mini, you couldn't bring in reference images. Um, and here, I don't think there's a, yeah, there is no spotlight. However, you can do see-through. So if you want to bring in a reference image to your desktop, for example, let's do this. Nope, not that here. It's my little side view here. So I'm just going to download uh, this image here. Let's say save image as, oh wait, that's a better one. Come on, Chrome, wake up. Desktop. So for instance, I can open up a JPEG or whatever image in your favorite image viewer, and we can position this right behind our um, ZBrush, and then we can do a quick see-through, and now we can see uh, our image through the background onto our desktop, and then we can use that as a reference. We can also use our floor planes as uh, reference images, which we might get to later. Uh, we don't have an undo slider in here, but we can go in here to edit, and we can say take this undo counter and just drag it back. So that's that can be our undo slider. It's just not in our scene here, which actually isn't, isn't too terrible. Actually, maybe prefer that. You can do the same thing in ZBrush. Just go in here to edit and say, don't show my undo hider. It might be under preferences, edit. Um, so you can still have the functionality. Um, big hug from Spain. Thank you very much for that. I need it this morning. I'm doing good. Yeah, we're doing, uh, we'll do ZBrush core today. Um, cool. Uh, no, did I miss a question? If I miss a question, I apologize. Um, cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I will, uh, I'll try to stream today. Uh, how would you split the ears of the mesh, then bridge them into two areas, but all as one subtool? Um, I mean, we, well, let's see. So in here, if you hold down control shift and select lasso, we can do visibility. We can also do masking, I think. Uh, let's turn off mesh balloon and we'll go back here to mask lasso. Uh, so here we have mask lasso. Also underneath stroke, we have um, lazy mouse with our lasso brushes now. So you have that. You want to keep that on so you can go through here and you should be able to like mask and you can make a polygroup so you can hit control w to make a polygroup of course we grabbed a little bit too much so that's where you can hold down control shift and visibility um, and uh, we can just hopefully go in here to split hidden and now we have two cat ears split into their own subtool now to bridge these two uh in zbrush zbrush you could do it a couple different ways let's see brush in here hmm so in ZBrush, you, there's a there's a brush in here you can use that's called, it's a curve brush where basically you hold on shift and you frame an open hole and you frame an open hole and it'll bridge the verts between them. Um, and here, and also you could use ZModeler. Um, gosh, I mean, I mean, we could try this. We can go in here to geometry, um, close holes. Since we have that now, it's going to give us a new poly group. We can hit W, control tap in here. I'm going to control drag out and that's going to give us new geometry. So, uh, you know, you can actually hold down control and go control and it'll continue dragging out new edge loops essentially. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of manually bridge these together uh, and you can dyna mesh them together. <laughs> but I mean, this is a little bit meh, a little bit janky, but you know, we have Dynamesh here, so we can go through here and you can bridge that all as one piece of geo if you wanted to, I suppose. Uh, and you could also zero mesh this. So in here, let's go ahead and hit control I, or that's my hotkey for inflate. And it's like, okay, we got this weird piece in here, <clears throat> but now we can go through here and we can do a zero mesher. Um, not a ton of options in here. We basically have zero mesher in half. Let's do half. This hit zero mesh, okay. And since we have X symmetry turned on, we can just keep hitting zero measure, by the way, for half, half, half. There we go. So now we have this as its own subtool separated out. And then this one, we can just control drag to read dyna mesh. It'll close our holes automatically. Um, so yeah, not, not a, in ZBrush core, that's a little bit difficult, but um, <laughs> yes, cow, catfish, Pokemon. <laughs> it's got kind of a, 
<laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, yes, uh, no, I'm I'm restream. I, I just don't know if I saw your answer. I saw I saw an answer, Luca, but I don't see your question. Um, uh, let's see, or maybe I just got to it late. Because I see the, uh, because you can't divide them to quads without an extra vertex, that's it. I, oh, why are triangles hard to work with? Um, they're not. Short answer and long answer. Um, yeah, you'd uh, be more, like, if you can be more specific on, like, in this situation, triangles are difficult to work with. Um, I could maybe answer it, but <clears throat> in general, triangles will just, in fact, every polygon in the universe in CG is actually a triangle. It's just what you're seeing here on the screen uh, is a quad, but underneath the hood, it's all triangles. Uh, I plan on making new concept sketching videos. The old one's still very good, but a little bit old. Uh, sure, we can do that today, actually. There's plenty of concept sketching tools in here. Um, higher volume. I've turned up the gain. Here, I'll do it again. I'll keep turning it on. I don't know if it's because Oh, you know what? I can turn up the gain in OBS. I'm afraid to mess with that right at the moment, though. I had the same thing uh, streaming on Pixelogic's channel. And in fact, on Pixelogic, it was very low. But when I posted it to my... I wonder if it's something to do with the stream. Because when I posted it to my channel, it sounded fine. So, I don't know. Yeah, no Z modeler is a little bit, it, you know, it's a it's a challenge to overcome. Speaking of Z modeler, so oh wait, we were doing something here. So we have our mesh balloon here. Uh, Real time AO is now in here, so we can go in here to render preview AO. You can turn on occlusion, and then while you're sculpting in here, you can go through. Alt tap. You can alt tap any uh, sub tool. By the way, you can go through here and you'll see it'll update uh, real time AO uh, on the fly. And you can go in here and there's some options in here. So render, you can uh, crank up the intensity or lower the intensity, uh, crank up the quality. If you really crank up the quality and you're working with really high resolution meshes, you may have a little bit of a performance hit. Um, and they can change that main radius down or up a little bit. Secondary radius, blur if you want, and then turn that on and off here. So that's kind of neat. Huh? Um, lazy mouse brushes like lasso we already talked about. Added the following deformers. Well, let's see. Let's see. Did they add them in here too? Okay, so we do have inflate, scale, stretch. I don't even remember stretch. I'll have to check that one out. Smooth all and smooth. Uh, and also down here, I would assume. So underneath deformation, we've also got some deformers. These are global deformers. So it's essentially just world axis Y up. You know, so if I want to go through and twist, you know, that's on the Z axis by default, but you can throw that on the Y axis and you can twist it in here. Um, however, if we wanted to say, um, let's do this. Let's do B, I, oh, you know what? Let's go in here. Brush. Oh, we're 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 pared down. That's okay. Um, let's see. Let's go in here. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift. So this is a feature. If you hold down Control Shift with the lasso, you can grab an edge loop or an edge ring. So that's a way you can kind of um, get a little bit of that functionality back. Of course, it made me some spirals, didn't it? Um, well, here we go. And there's no slice, is there? Yeah. This is getting fun. So let's do this. I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna say. Uh, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, and we're going to go down here to masking. We're going to mask. Mm, there's no border masking. Yeah. Hold down shift to smooth. Do we have. Uh, <laughs> we probably don't even have. Yeah, we don't. All right, all right. This is getting interesting. Okay, hold down shift. Uh, there should be smooth modifiers for min connected, but that's not in here. I'm trying to figure out a way to smooth. These things, we can't mask open border. We can't uh, smooth them and connected. We can't, we can't, we can do a deformer and we can go through here. Uh, we can polish this, but it's gonna polish my entire object. But you know what, that's okay. Um, so we kind of got that figured out. So we have this here and then we wanna go ahead and say geometry, modify topology, close holes. And I wanna see maybe does Ziri Mesher uh, take any consideration polygroups? No, it doesn't. Half, 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 and it also has some. It has some setting dialed in where it has a little bit of adaptive in there. That's okay. So, what was I doing? Oh, right. So, uh, if we have W here, let's go ahead and hold down Control Shift, turn off X symmetry, hold down Control Shift Alt, 
and then again geometry modify topology delete hidden so now if i go through here and i alt tap here so again like i was saying under these global deformers if you do a twist it's going to be in that world axis here however in this one i can go through here uh, and i do a twist it's going to go down uh, the axis based on your um based on your gizmo so that's that's cool huh as uh, so we can go through here and we can twist this up and we can start making like a little horn there and the reason I did it on one axis is because across both axes it would be the bounding box for both objects, which is not what I wanted. However, ooh, let's see, if we go in here to mirror and then geometry modified topology mirror and weld, yay. Now, in this case, since I have it local symmetry turned on, it's going to mirror and weld across that local axis. But if I go over here and I do mirror and weld with LSIM turned off, that'll go across the world axis. I'm going to tap X to turn X symmetry back on. And there we go. We're back to where we started. So we can go through here and uh, you know what? Let's do this. Spin these around here instead of ears. We got little, little horns here. So yeah, there's some good functionality in here. This is pretty robust. There's some, there's some things I kind of miss, but there's ways around them. And you know what? Brute forcing uh, solutions is actually um, sometimes a good, good thing to explore. Um, following deformers, uh, thick skin. So we do have thick skin now. So if I go in here, say to my clay buildup brush, and we go to the back and we're gonna sculpt on this, it's just gonna keep building up and building up and building up as far as we wanna go. However, now if we go over here to our thick skin, turn that on, it's going to cap it at a certain distance, in this case 20. And also if we hold down alt, it'll go in 20. So out 20, in 20, no matter what, it's going to stop right at that point. Now if we go in here to uh, brush, there's no layer brush in here, so that's an easy way for you to get a layer brush type of thing going. So that's cool. And also you can change your skin thickness. So if you change it down, it'll go ahead and start at this thin, so you can be very, very thin, then crank this up. That'll give you a little bit more leeway. You'll see it'll cap out uh, later. Now, you're gonna see this one's going to cap out and be flat from the original uh, ball we started from. If you turn thick skin off and then turn it on, it'll project the new sculpt out underneath it. So it's like storing a different morph target, if you know what that means. Um, no, no morph targets in here, but essentially that kind of functionality here. Uh, so that's cool. And of course, if you take your thick skin um, down to zero, that's a, that'll essentially allow you to kind of scrub all the changes you've made uh, since you hit thick skin. It's not grabbing those last two. Let's go to standard brush here. There we go. There we go, so we're back to where we started. So we can turn that off and uh, control drag to redynamesh. Let's go in here and smooth. Uh, I'm gonna hold down shift to smooth. I'm gonna turn that Z intensity down a bit. Uh, that way I can just kind of barely smooth and then I can turn that up if I need to. So that's thick skin, uh, deformation contrast. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so in here, if I go in here to deformation in here and in, in big Z brush, you also have contrast brushes, contrast target, contrast delta. But in here we have uh, contrast. So you can go through here and you can crank up that contrast on your object. And in fact, we hold down control and we're going back to mask pin, control and then control tab in your document. Uh, you can just do contrast, oops, contrast in just certain areas. Uh, and you can also do negative contrast to kind of, it's more of a, it's not like here's smooth. You see smooth is a little more of a feather touch. Uh, this contrast is more of like a polish. So that's neat, huh? And then auto load project ability. So underneath your preferences, you have, where would that be? I forget. Um, I think I thought it was in its own menu in ZBrush. Quick save, auto load, auto load. Am I just missing it? Um, oh, startup. Auto load recent project. If you turn that on, the last project you had open in ZBrush, it'll auto load it for you. Um, I don't usually keep that on, but if that's there, if you need it. And then the sticky key preferences too is another preference in here. It was under, I wanna say UI. No, click, use sticky keys. So you can turn that on <clears throat> and that way you can just hold down S and then move, the, move your uh, mouse back and forth. Uh, and that'll change your draw size as opposed to tapping S, moving your draw size. It saves you one click. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, does anyone bake normal maps on ZBrush anymore? I want to say maybe if you're doing like 2.5D stuff um, and your canvas, getting a normal map, a tiling normal map out of there, maybe. But um, you want to add a robot chest and arms to this, like the Terminator you did back then, uh, without Z Modeler. Uh, that would just be um, kind of brute forcing. So we can go ahead and. Um, <laughs> You know what else I wish I could do? Preferences, edit, um, align cursor to surface and turn that off. That's usually what I do too. That's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't really need it. That's just a preference thing. Um, that's cute and all, but let's start making something real. Um, what would be good? Kind of like, a, I guess like maybe a cybernetic organism here. So, well, here's another thing we can do. If you want to start a new project, you can go in here to comma. There's no load tool from project in here, but you can start a whole new project. So first you'd want to save. Um, there's no tool save as, but you can go in here to file, save as, or just hit control S, that'll save as the project. Um, but also in here you can start with, for example, you can just load up a mail and start, start using it. Um, also, if you want to start with a head, you can go in here and use the demo anime head or like the head planes and just start with um, something like this. And you know, Dynamesh is already turned on for it. And if you want to make an animal, there's a really cool, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here, but um, there's a Zizu. You can go through here and you can load up uh, any number of these things. So we can go through here and uh, you know, grab a Mantis, start with this. And with all the Z sphere knowledge that you have, which is basically, uh, you can hit Q and, uh, oh, do we have Z? We don't have Z sketching, do we? No. Doesn't look like it. Uh, however, you can go in here and you can draw new Z spheres. So if you wanted to modify this, hit Q, W, um, move these things around, scale, rotate, all the normal stuff you can do. And then again, hit A for adaptive skin and go through there and change your adaptive skin properties. If you don't want Dynamish, turn that off. If you don't want density, turn that off. And that'll be your new adaptive skin. So a lot of flexibility there. However, if you do want to just kind of start with your own, Let's go ahead and say, let's go ahead and clear our ZBrush out. Load that back up. Cool, yeah, so we'll start. Uh, let's see here. Um, so let's see, okay, yeah. Um, well, let's start with, let's make, let's make something. Uh, you know what? I am going to start with that head. So we'll go in here to the head planes and we'll just grab one of these head planes here. It's already Z remeshed. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say, let's scale this down a bit, move this up, sub tool, append. We'll do a little bit of both. Go in here to Z sphere. So we'll just make our own custom Z sphere mesh. We'll hit X to go across X symmetry with our Z sphere selected. Hit W and move this into place and then E to scale it down. And then if you wanted to go through here and like make shoulders and stuff, uh, you definitely can. So this will be kind of the start of our body. And then Q, we'll just go down here. We'll make this our chest and then Q, go right down the middle. And you can, again, continue making the body. We'll, we'll just make a bust uh, for now, but this is where you can go through. And again, if you want to make the entire arm and then hit Q and then W, you can start that way as well. So a very quick and easy way. And then again, hit A for adaptive skin, change the properties like we've already talked about, merge these together, dynamesh them together, and you're good to go. So uh, we'll start with something like this. And you know what, we'll do maybe like a, um, oh, what was that? Old 1920s Metropolis. We'll do a little bit of hard surface and we'll do a little bit of organic sculpting too. So something a little, a little uh, this, but maybe uh, I don't know. We'll just we'll, I'll just have that up. So because we were talking about doing hard surface stuff as well. So uh, we have this, and like I said before, we're just going to do a bust. I'm going to hold down Alt with the draw mode turned on, and we'll go ahead and turn off floor and perspective. We know where we are in space, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's good enough. And like I said, while we have this in Z sphere mode, and go through here and make your changes, scale these up and down, and uh, let's see, one head down, two head down, sure. Good enough. I'm going to hit A. Now you can go through here and you can sculpt on your adaptive skin, but that's a little bit misleading. You always want to make sure you go in here to adaptive skin and then say make adaptive skin and then append that right back in here and then the Z sphere we can go ahead and delete. 
So uh, with this on, we already have Dynamesh turned on. I'm gonna crank that Dynamesh resolution up just a bit and then uh, merge down, control drag to Dynamesh those together. And then now you can see, we can go through here and we can smooth. Actually, 128 was fine, even though I scaled it down. There we go. So now we can go through here with our clay brush, our clay buildup brush, and we can start um, you know, modifying this sculpt. We'll go ahead and thin this out just a little bit there and thin it out this way just a little bit there. And then we'll go ahead and go into our inflate and we'll just inflate this up just a bit here. Push these shoulders in and hold on shift and sculptures pro and that'll allow you to kind of really go through here and uh, get rid of some stuff and then we'll hold down shift and get rid of uh, sculptures pro so that's just a way you can kind of go through here and again just start modifying uh, your mesh we have x symmetry turned on and i think we're good to go so for now let's go in here to trim dynamic and we can start defining the zones we can go in here to our standard brush which uh, we can tap l to turn lazy radius off like we talked about before and now we can just start going through here and defining okay here's the, the collarbone here and then there's the traps and then there's the scapula and there's the spine back through here all that good stuff and then uh, here's the chest so again one head down two heads down here and then if you want to start defining areas again this you can just brute force sculpt everything there's nothing wrong with that um, but if you want to do more of a not a stylized approach but a more controlled approach uh, again I can just hop into the uh, BI brush insert primitives and then hit M we can grab again a polysphere here, go ahead and say, ah, I don't have a split on mass points here, and then grab these. Let's go ahead and take LSIM. And you can just, again, if you want to put on muscles, if you want to put on um, arms, or again, just have more control before you uh, commit to putting these into the same uh, asset, you can do that. And again, you can hit D and Shift D. So D is going to give us our dynamic preview, and then Shift D is going to turn that off. Um, Again, that's just a different kind of way to work. This gives you a little bit more, it, sometimes it can be easier to kind of go through here. Of course, if I can't, there we go, Alt-Tap here, there we go. And so now, again, you can work on this and then you can Alt-Tap here and you can work on uh, the rib cage and stuff like that separately. And if everything, if anything ever gets in the way, uh, you can just go in here to solo mode and that way you can kind of be like, okay, let me go turn that off now so again it just makes it a little bit easier to work on uh, so sub tools integral part of the old workflow but let's go ahead and take this clay brush here and we're gonna knock this down we'll build up these uh, deltoids just a little bit here and if you want to pull out like bsh for your snake hook brush you can turn on sculptures pro and this is another way again you're gonna just gonna test late on the fly so if you wanted to go through here and add arms or add horns or whatever you want to do you can use Sculptures Pro for that. So just another option for you. And you can actually use that as your move brush with or without uh, Sculptures Pro turned on. So again, clay brush here, smooth. And if your smooth intensity is a little bit much, um, you can always go turn that down if you need to. And Enough. So we'll go and kind of focus in here on the head as well while we're talking about this. So I'm going to go through here, I'm going to trim dynamic, and then we're going to go in here to our clay buildup. And this is going to be where our eyes end up going, right in here, and our brow ridge. And if it's going to be female, uh, we'll just go ahead and we're not going to put in like a monster brow ridge or anything like that. We can keep that relatively smooth, forehead pretty upright. And uh, I think that's about it. That's the basics of that head we don't have to do too much work it's already a lot of it's already done for us in fact bi brush insert body parts we do have body parts in here so if you want to hit m if you want to go through here and just grab uh here's female full arm you can just pull that out uh, rotate it into place scale it up to fit and then uh, because we have dynamesh turned on let's also turn on lsim put that hold down alt and move the gizmo pivot around and there we go so now control drag control drag again and we got arms put in there. Jeez, I didn't think I did that many undos. 
Cool. Uh, let's get back, cut it back here. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I was going to look and see. Um, crease edge loop on the horns. Can you, is there a crease? Geometry, I don't see a crease in here. Uh, and there's no Z modeler. So I'm not sure, I'm not certain there's a way to crease in here. Uh, I, I did mention before, so if we wanted to do... You know, we can make our own insert mesh brushes. So let's go, um, I'm gonna go out of, let's see. Oh, there is no out of edit mode. Uh, okay, let's go in here to cylinder 3D. Let's go down here to initialize. This is just a primitive. <clears throat> so we're gonna go down here to H divides. We'll say 16, oops. 16 V divides down. So a nice simple uh, custom cylinder here. We'll say make poly mesh 3D. Um, we can go down here, I think, to, uh, we can't, um, well, we can do this. Hold down control shift, grab these top parts, hit control W, control shift, control W. So now we have poly groups on both sides. We can hit W. And like I mentioned before, you can hold down control and you can tap uh, any poly group, hold down control and then drag out and then keep dragging. And that'll give you more edge loops. So you can kind of add edge loops like that in here. However, if you hit Y to go into transpose mode and tap right here, you can hit E and then hold down control and you can pull, oops, you need to control tap this so it masks it. And then if you tap right here, hold down control with scale, you can go through here and then hit W. You can move this out. And then like I said before, just tap to reset that pivot and then E, uh, transpose this in. And then you can let go of control just to kind of move this edge ring in. And then uh, one more time, we'll hit W, control, drag in, and edge loop, hold down shift to constrain it. And then E to kind of go through here and scale it down. So you do have some uh, box modeling capabilities. Let's say geometry. Yeah, there's no edge loop stuff in here. And there's no creasing. But if you did want to box model stuff and you want to make your own custom brush, we can go in here to brush. Well, you can't make custom brushes in there, can you? Brush create. Nope, you can't. Hmm. I was hoping if you made a ZBrush core brush, it would let you. Uh, but that's okay. So we can go through here and we can go back to our asset we're working on. We can say append. And we were working on that cylinder. So we're going to append this working, this cylinder here we were working with. We'll hit Y to go back into gizmo mode here. And we can just scale this down. And this can be something that, you know, can go on our character like so. Uh, and again, if you want to do uh, something symmetrical, like we want it to be off here to the side. or instance, and we'll go ahead and scale this down. We do have LSIM turned on still. Uh, so we can go ahead and just position it on one side, and then we're gonna go back to our geometry modified topology, um, mirrored weld across the X with LSIM turned off. And there we go, we'll turn X symmetry back on, and then we're right where we wanna be with a uh, symmetrical um, custom shape that we box modeled like so. So in this instance, since I don't have access to creasing, I may start with a higher resolution cylinder so that it's automatically smooth. And uh, that would be probably where I would start. I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's possible on a car and ZBrush. Yes, for sure. There's there's whole automotive. Um, in fact, way back in the day. Um, yeah. There is, uh, I want to say Alex O, box models a car. And um, back when, I'm trying to remember what was new. It's like history record or something was new and a lot of people were doing automotive stuff. And actually, I modeled a car in ZBrush or a truck. Um, you know what? And in fact, well, let me see. Let me see if I have. So in ZBrush 2021, what's new, we were talking about some of the Oh, okay. Did I did I have a little bit of it? Yeah. Okay. So it's it's under the Zebra 2021 What's New bonus, but uh, it's the basically the making of this car. So here you can see a little bit of it. So here's got some reference going through here, getting my volumes, uh, Z remeshing using Z modeler booleans to kind of get the shapes. You know, putting in my bevels where I need them. Um, yeah, and it it took it didn't take that long. It took maybe a couple hours to kind of go through and quickly model this car, model the steering wheel, the seats, 
you know, all, all the tools we have in ZBrush, big ZBrush, by the way, not, not necessarily ZBrush core for all this stuff, but um, yeah, the truck and that stuff went pretty fast. So the end result, and now we're getting into the entire scene here, but I'm trying to see if we had, yeah, so there's, you know, this, this was all 100% ZBrush, that mech scene in there. And I guess I do, I, do I cover a lot of that? I don't remember. But sure, yeah, you can, you can model a car and do this. Sorry, I gotta keep drinking. True. Um, cool. Uh, vertex and edge control. Yeah, yeah, and again, it's 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 a it's a comfort thing. So, kind of personal preference. Um, yeah, we can try that. Let's see. Do we have brush? We don't have curves in here, so we may have to figure that out. Um, and the skeleton hard surface techniques. Yeah, we can try. So um, we have our object here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this off, and I'm going to go down here to our deformation, and we're going to say inflate uh, maybe to like negative one, just to kind of put it barely underneath the surface. And now when I go through here with my clay buildup, we can go through... And it's kind of like we're concepting a little bit more hard surface right on top. So if we wanted to do, let's, let's look that up. I'm gonna keep all this in one area here, sorry. So for instance, if we had, um, you know, we wanted to do some sort of metallic uh, skeleton in here, we can kind of use this as a guide or as a way to start, and we can always go through and uh, modify this as needed. So, we can kind of go through here. I'm going to go around, and I'm just using clay buildup for this for now. And we'll kind of, again, go through here. And you know what? Let's keep it kind of self-confined and around the side here, because this is all going to be stay pretty rigid. There's not going to be a whole lot of flexibility in the rib cage. I'm just going to keep it away from the waist here. And uh, the spine is going to be, this is, again, this, this area should be fairly safe. Um, to put some more rigidity, but of course around the shoulders, I want to leave that alone in case you, you know, you want clavicle movement and all that stuff. So again, here's here's some chest stuff. We can put some clavicle stuff over the top, and then uh, we'll go through here. Sure, something like this maybe. And that's just gonna be our basic shape. And then we can go through here. We can control drag. We'll redyne the mesh, and we'll go through here with our Damien standard brush. We'll hold down Alt. And we'll just kind of pull out to edges here. So we're just going to define or refine where I want my borders of this new geometry to be. And if you don't have enough resolution, you don't want to go crazy with resolution, but you can go in here uh, to your DynaMesh and just crank that resolution up a bit. Turn blur down to zero, by the way. We don't need that on. Uh, and you can also go in here to your H polish brush and just hold down Alt and let go of Alt. And you can very quickly, you know, start figuring out. And again, if I was to box model this, I could, and it wouldn't be terribly difficult, but as far as just like figuring things out and moving stuff around and getting creative with with my you know shape language and oh you know what there isn't clip in here, which is uh, really useful when you want to do hard surface stuff, but you know kind of figuring things out and going into here and with your move brush and kind of trying to see what what's going to work and what's not going to work or where you want to kind of move stuff uh, and move accu isn't in here as well. I don't think that brush. It doesn't have that option, but you just got to be a little more careful with our move brushes, I suppose. So you can see very quickly, I can kind of, okay, this is what I want. Uh, and then in regular ZBrush, what I would do is just go through and rebuild this. Uh, but in here, what we can do is, again, we're just defining our edges here. And uh, this is just going to be like the concepting phase, you know, so go through here. And then again, uh, Damien Standard Brush, hold down Alt, and um, let's join here. Let's say we want to dig in a little bit here, and then we want to do a, um, again, Damien Center Brush. I'm going to raise that resolution just a little bit more. Hold down Alt, and we can get like a kind of a soft transition right through here. So we'll go back to our clay brush, and we'll kind of build up to that ridge that we held down. So we'll have a hard transition on this side, like so, and then a softer transition over here. And again, we'll go back into our H Polish brush. So again, very easy to kind of go through. And I do feel a little bit 
hamstrung not having everything available to me that's in ZBrush regular. Um, but like I said before, you can get you can get quite a bit done in here. And in fact, we should probably go over the, some of the basics for people who are who may want to watch this. Is well, you know what I do have. Now that I think about it, you have to go way back in time. But here, uh, ZBrush Core. So I did a ZBrush Core playlist on navigation and all the basics uh, through here. Same thing on my ArtStation page, I believe. Look for the apple and the worm uh, right up here. You can see there's 47 videos all on basic ZBrush Core functionality. This is old. This is when ZBrush for Core first came out. Um, but you can check that out. And again, it's been a while, so you can see that here. And you can see that uh, on my playlists here. So a bunch of stuff in here that might be interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the streaming, the volume. Like I've I've cranked it up. Um, my mic is super responsive in here. Um, I can go through here and I can change. I can add gain. I really don't know what to do, guys. Um, Any better? Because I, if I make this video and I upload it, the video is fine, so it's not OBS. Uh, I just don't know what's happening on the stream. Um, can't quit ZSphere, but yeah, I couldn't find ZSphere topology. Uh, it's basically just Z spheres. So that would be awesome. You can go through here and you can plot your points once you figure out exactly where you want your points to go. Um, super easy. Uh, but I may have to go in here with Z-Remesher. Yeah, or rebuild, uh, wherever. Yeah, okay. So, YouTube, Twitch seems fine. I don't know. Uh, okay, so we're going to go through here, and we're going to H-Polish this down. And we're gonna, oh, so we have H-Polish and Trim Dynamics. So essentially what I'll do is I'll use H-Polish to kind of go through here and get nice broad surfaces polished up to edges, and then if I want to bevel these edges, that's when I go into my trim dynamic, and I'll change the direction of those. So I can, you can do a small trim dynamic brush and just get a small bevel. Uh, and then again, you can go, always go back in here with your H polish brush, and you could clean those up as well. Uh, again, I'm working pretty low still. It's like I can't get just enough resolution. Let's, there we go. And again, trim dynamic through here. We'll go ahead and soften this edge through here a little bit and through here. Uh, if you want to do more hard surface ZBrush modeling in ZBrush ZBrush, I do have a little bit on that. I've spread throughout here, there's a bunch. There's a, the Sci-Fi Pistol playlist, which has a lot of ZModeler stuff and Boolean. Um, ornamental Helmet a little bit, but this Mechanical Skull High Res also has a, just a ton of concepty ZBrush hard surface stuff in that. Uh, so if you want to know how to make that, it's right there in that playlist. Uh, same thing here. Here's a quick, here's a quick gun, and then the here's a here's a boot. You can make a boot really quickly. Here's a pistol, and then like I said, um, the mechanical skull skull series. So anyway, um, yeah. So here we go. Ugh. Without IMM brushes, custom IMM brushes, because I I would have entire libraries full of gears and pistons and pulleys and all sorts of things I could put on here linear actuators and such. Uh, but for now, I guess we'll keep this. So another thing we could try to do is, let's go ahead and duplicate this off here. Um, so we have this, this is just his own duplicate. We'll go ahead and split, go into solo mode. So you can use it. I think we do have extraction. Yeah, we have extract in here. Um, so you know what, let's do this. Let's delete that one. Uh, back to our regular uh, person here. We're gonna go over here and we can start extracting shapes off of here as well. So we can go through and we can say, okay, let's control drag over this. Now we don't have an edge loop mass border, unfortunately, which will give us a nice clean uh, slice, but under extraction, we do have some smooth options. So if I hit extract, you're gonna see it's kind of, um, and it's just a preview by the way. So we go through here, hit extract. And it's like, okay, the edges are a little lumpy. We can, ch we can, no, we don't have a polish by features in here, do we? There's no polish by feature in here. However, we can use extract uh, to kind of get us there. So we can go in here, extract. We're going to change the smoothness to an open circle. And now when you, when we extract, you see it's going to be much smoother. This is a different algorithm. The closed circle is going to maintain your volumes better. The open circle is 
going to smooth better but kind of lose your volumes but in this case I think that's more what we want uh, of course you can crank that smoothness up even more if you want so we'll just go maybe 14 there you go very smooth result um, you can change the thickness on the fly I think the thickness is fine and then if we want this geo make sure you hit accept and then now you have a completely separate uh, subtool out here that's all geometried up now if you did want to uh, well this is going to get tricky without Z modeler is there dynamic thickness no there is a micro poly though let's play around with that so one thing you can do um, you can hold down control shift and isolate just this top polygon here and then again geometry modify topology uh, delete hidden and then we can go zero measure so we'll say zero measure here uh, keep half off we'll just hit zero measure and that'll go ahead and give us new geometry oh boy let's go half so that's uh, just a way to get very quick um, new geometry on uh, what what kind of object you're working on. Uh, now at this point, I could like Z modeler Q mesh this out or whatever in the regular Z brush. But in this one, um, we may have to extract uh, thickness. So we're gonna go back in here. We're gonna turn smooth down to zero this time. And then when I hit extract now, we can hit okay. And that'll go ahead and give us that new geometry. We can hit accept. And so that's a way we can get thickness with Z mesh geometry using extraction. And with extraction, it'll give us creasing. So we can hit D for dynamic, and now you can see we get a nice crease along here. There's not a lot of crease control in this one. Um, there is in regular ZBrush, but that's one way. I guess uh, creases can exist in here. And then this is a regular extraction, by the way. We can go ahead and just delete. Uh, that was what I delete. So that's new geometry extracted with thickness. Um, there's a way you can do that in ZBrush Core. Um, huh, interesting. Uh, masking and then with Sculptors Pro turned on use the move brush to extrude the cable shape or snake hook yeah I think that would work snake hook might be now getting a consistent width it might be hmm, let's try let's try this so I'm gonna alt tap here you know what you know what I would use for cables um, Z spheres so we're gonna go in here to Z spheres and then um, let's go ahead and X go across X symmetry here and then E to scale this down I want cables to go out of both sides of the head here so I'm gonna go into transparency mode again E W move this into place hit Q and then I think if you draw it'll actually snap oh, no maybe turn off ghost there we go so if you have ghost turned off it'll actually snap here so we can go through and we can say okay let's scale this out it'll snap to our surface and then now we have a Z sphere. So I'm going to go through here and hold down uh, shift to snap it to the original size here. And I'm going to say, okay, I want this to plug in somewhere specific. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to put it, you know, somewhere, somewhere over here. In fact, let's give it a place. I'm going to turn off transparency. Um, go back to our sculpt we're doing. And you're going to say, you know what, let's go in here to our clay brush. And I don't, um, we do have alphas in here. So we can actually, can we clone? No. Okay, well, let's take our standard brush. Let's go in here to alpha and we'll go in here to drag dot and we'll crank up that Z intensity a little bit. And we can actually go through here, turn our focal shift down to negative 100 and we can, you can just keep tapping to add, you know, like a little port or like I was doing before, you can just go in here to clay brush and you can just kind of start adding a little port and then control drag to redynamesh and then hold down alt. And that'll be maybe where these things end up. Just gives me a, an indication of where these things need to go. So we'll alt tap our Z spheres again and go back into transparency mode. So right now, you know, this tube goes straight down. And if that's what you want, you're good to go. However, uh, we want a little more nuance to our cable here. So I'm gonna hit Q and we're just gonna go through here and we're just gonna tap a couple areas. So now I can go through and move these things down. So let's say here, this is gonna kind of have a natural hang to it and in fact oh man if you were in regular ZBrush you could go through and you could use dynamics to kind of drape uh, a cord uh, or at least a plane with a cord attached to it with micropoly all sorts of cool stuff but um, in here it's a little bit more limited but again you know ZBrush can be a little overwhelming for a lot of people so if you're just starting out this is I think a good option to kind of get acclimated and then if you want to go through and do some really zany stuff and big z brush um, you can do that so again we're hitting w to go into move mode and make your draw size really small tap s and then make your draw size really small and then w to go through here and 
do it like so. So that way, yeah, let's turn off transparency. So now we have like a cord coming out the side and let's hit Q oops, and W so we can kind of, you know, it's gonna come out this way. And you know what, this is just gonna fall. It's gonna go down, zoop, down here and then kind of hit and then go this way and then back over like so and we'll call that our cord now if i hit a for my depth of skin that is going to give me a dynameshed result but again if this is going to be a tube uh, i can also go through here and we're going to do adapt the skin turn down dynamesh resolution to zero density down to one and uh, this will be our preview and this will give us a little bit more control so with that said, let's say make adaptive skin. Uh, the Z-spheres, you know, I always say, okay, you're gonna pen this and then delete your Z-spheres. If you wanna keep these around, you can just turn that eyeball off and that'll just keep them in here in case you need them again. But now we have just regular geometry. So let's hit Control W to make, well, not yet. Let's hit Solo. Uh, this middle piece I don't need anymore. So Control Shift Tap and then Control Shift Drag and then Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And now we have Close Holes. We can close those holes for us. Um, we can't crease, but that's okay. So now if I hit D for dynamic, that's the result. Now it is kind of like, gives us a little bit of a, kind of a crease, uh, or it's kind of a little too rectilinear. So we're gonna go over here to our deformation and we're just gonna tap polish uh, twice. Now we are losing volume on that, but that's okay. We can always go back in here to inflate and inflate back up. Maybe a much nicer, softer transition. Hit D for dynamic. And then now um, I should have left myself a little more wiggle room here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll brute force it into place, man. Go through there and do that. So that's a way you can get uh, cords going. And ZBrush cord is core. Um, yeah, smoother edges if you mask polygroup and zero mesh. It might, um, for example. So if we wanna go through here, let's try that. Let's say duplicate this off, cause zero mesh does kind of have a lot of built in, it wants to alias things quite a bit. So we duplicate this off, hit control W. There's no edge loop mask border, so we can isolate this. Yeah. Say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Um, and then zero mesher, uh, it, it wants to really build that in. You know, so in this case, I mean, on the, in this case, you could go in here um, to polish and it should do a pretty decent job of just polishing the whole thing. Uh, and if you wanted to manually, there's no visibility in here either. It's kind of a fun challenge where it's like, what are the, let's do, we can do this, control tap to invert and then um, use polish to just polish those outside areas and then maybe z mesh. Yeah, I mean, the lower you go, the more it'll average out. So eventually it will get pretty low. Oh boy, we got both sides here. Um, oh, and we don't have visibility, grow all. So go through here and carefully make a selection and then geometry modify topology. Uh, delete hidden and extract uh, for thickness. Seems like there, no, there's no morph. A couple of different ways to get thickness in regular ZBrush, but extract is probably your best bet here. Uh, have any recommendations for sci-fi spaceships, mech design, resources, books, etc.? Um, not off the top of my head. I know, um, like mech design, uh, one of the fun, let's see. I like watching this guy. Um, there we go. Cynix, S-I-N-I-X, here's Design Lab. So go through here and you can watch him kind of design mechs and then refine them. That's fun, two of two. See where he goes with this, yeah. Yeah, I like watching this guy. Give him a shot. Cool, all right. Um, cool, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm just getting caught up here. Uh, I'll tell you your Zebra Friday Vision Media YouTube and that you don't need to buy them on our station. Is that true? If it is, I'm still buying it for your work. Well, thanks. Uh, I, I appreciate, you know, any support you want to give me. However, yeah, you don't need to buy that. Um, I put generally, I mean, it's 
organized and a little more concise. But if you want to learn ZBrush from ZBrush 4R8, which is like ancient history now, all the way up to ZBrush 2021, all the new features, I have playlists for all that. Um, and a lot of the basics, like I said, you know, the ArtStation intro to ZBrush, if you have access to ArtStation Learning, that's, that's the basics. Uh, I have the basics. The first unit on my uh, ZBrush Radiation course is all the basics. I have a new intro to ZBrush updated right here. So be I think between those, and if you ever have any questions, you can just Google it. But even in here, it's like, well, fiber mesh is a little light in some of these. Well, you know, type in fiber mesh, and I, I have tons of live streams on all sorts of fiber mesh stuff. So... I don't know. Uh, the ZBrush for Ideation series is just a nice way to get that data organized. Um, but if you don't need that, then uh, yeah, there's no reason to buy it. It's all free on there. You just it, you have to do a little bit more like work, but not that much. Yeah, yeah. This is ZBrush Core. Um, yeah, Art of Star Wars. That's a good one. Thanks, John. Uh, do you bake maps from a high poly ZBrush model? You bake them from a decimated version. Um, generally speaking, uh, full high res, unless I run into problems where it's like trying to bake 90 million polygons in Marmoset or something, and then I'll, I'll go through and decimate. But um, generally speaking, my high res. Uh, cool. Let's see. Am I caught up? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, and again, uh, and it's, again, and, and that's uh, the ZBrush Radiation course, I try to keep updated every release, or at least the ZBrush has so many releases. So like uh, I did just update um, the ideation course for 2021.6.2. Cool. Right on. And I'm, I'm going to try to do some more hard surface stuff. I do dabble a bit like the mechanical skull here, but also like this bird robot. Um, you know, just kind of going through and the ideation part, it's kind of, you know, you have brute force methodology, which is just going through and get your design out quickly. So like this sculpt right through here, this is all just a concept sculpt all the way to finish. There's nothing but me going through and just using ZBrush to get my idea out tangibly quickly in space so I can go, okay, do I like this? Do I not like this? Um, and it's not blood, sweat and tears. It's just kind of fun to do. And then from this point I can decide Am I done or do I want to go back through and basically rebuild everything as a sub-D mesh? Which isn't, again, it's not rocket science and you can have your favorite program for that. Um, Topo Gun or Quadraw or Modo or Blender, whatever you want to do to do that. But really it's more about like getting your idea out quickly. Like for me to box model something like this would be, uh, it would take me months and probably I would never get there. It would just be a, a nightmare. Uh, but for me to do this in ZBrush, it takes me a day and then from here I can decide, yeah, you know what? Yeah, this looks, this works fine. What do I need to rebuild to get a sub D mesh where I want it? Or I can choose, you know what? I'm just going to bake this off. It's going to be baked down to 2048 running around in game from a top th quarter, three down, top down three quarter. Uh, I'm done, you know? So essentially, you know, this is a concept sketch and I'm going to pose my sketch here just as a, a proof of concept to be like, hey, is this, would this work before I go through and spend weeks Retopologizing and resubding this thing, uh, do I want to do that as opposed to doing it and then being like three months later going, well, that design kind of sucked. Um, but yeah, so this is again just a quick concept sketch. I do have some specific stuff, not really. I mean, it's like you said, it's old. Um, I do have some stuff here, like the FPS female, like the making of her. This is years old, but it's all the same basic stuff clay brush, <laughs> Damien Standard, H polish, you know, going through here, splitting stuff up, going through and there's all sorts of start with the basic shapes and just get them in and then decide you know where you want to. In fact, um, I don't have it on my channel because I messed up. But if I go in here to stream Pavlovich Workshop, if you go way back in time to my Pavlovich Workshop, uh, we do some hard surface modeling through here on a sci-fi. Um, kind of start doing a mech. Again, this stuff's pretty old, um, but kind of going through here and doing a little bit of that rebuilding process and figuring out bodysuits and stuff like this. Maybe this one here, I'm trying to remember. I don't know, somewhere in here. But anyways, this is my pixel logic. Yeah, you can see us start making like shoulder pads and stuff from our messy concepts. So I'll go ahead and link you, Ooh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and link you to uh, 
that's my workshop page for Pixel Logic. But nowadays, what I do is I'll stream on Pixel Logic and then I'll just put that video up on my YouTube channel. Um, Marvel Setter Substance Painter or Baker. I noticed that Substance Painter sometimes struggle with small triangles. Um, I prefer Marmoset, but if I'm just doing something quick and dirty, um, I'll actually try Substance Painter first. And usually, I would say nine. I would say nine times out of ten, it gives me a, the result is just fine. If I need something very specific or I need a lot more control, I'll just go into Marmoset. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, tools. Uh, do the tools inspire the ideation, or do you have the idea and then decide what tools to use? Um, if I was better, if I was better, uh, I would, <laughs> I would, um, I would probably have the design in my head. Uh, for now, what it, what it, what a lot of it is, is just kind of going through and just figuring it out and having fun. This is for me, this is like drawing, like going through here. And again, if I was a better designer, a better drawer, um, I'd probably have a lot more fun. And that's one thing I'm just going to need to work on is just, I'm, I'm, I have pipelines and workflows, and uh, more of the technical side of things I do a lot. And then actual just like making stuff, I rare, I, you, I basically do once a month on my channel while I talk, so it's not really great. Um, but, you know, so we have this piece here that we've kind of made hard surface, but it is still attached to our original sculpt here. So if we want to go ahead and make this a little bit more freestanding, we can go through here and we can pop this off into its own sub tool here. So I'm just going to go through quickly and mask with mask pin just so we don't have that underlying mesh kind of hanging out there still. And again, uh, I wish we had clip brushes in here. And I wish we had Booleans, and I wish, and I wish. And I get it, I, I, I know there's there's reasons why, you know, you want to keep these things simple. You know, the more you start making it more like ZBrush, the more your people are going to be like, ah, oh, it's too much, how can I do that? You know, so just keeping it simple and brute force methodology on top of, instead of doing like a bunch of crazy, um, you know, it's solutions or elegant solutions sometimes, but maybe not so elegant in others. Or it's actually an elegant solution, but most people read it as, that was like five steps to do that. And it's like, yeah. And in another program, it'd be 15, or you wouldn't be able to do it at all. Um, and it really only took me 20 seconds, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, but that can but they can still kind of turn people off. Uh, speaking of, control tap to mask to blur it out, and then control alt tap to sharpen it back up in here as well. And then we can go through here again if we want to split this off we can hit Control w that's going to group mask clear mask um and then we can Control shift tap this and then geometry modify topology delete hidden now we do okay we do have um back face masking in here so underneath your brush you have auto masking back face turned on so what we can use we can a couple different things we can do so we can go through here we can go geometry um close holes and that'll go ahead and close our holes uh, as we do, would expect. However, we can also, there's auto groups in here, right? Let's go down here, control shift tap what it just made us, and then go in here to poly groups, auto groups. There we go. And if we had, you know, a poly group over here and a poly group over here that were separate, that's when you would go back to geometry modified topology uh, mirror and weld across the x axis. Now, I have this, so I'm going to hit W, control tap just the pink area, and now I can go through here. Let's go to unmatch my center. Uh, we can go through and we can you know, give ourselves a little leeway, give ourselves a little edge loop in here if we want to. Um, in fact, we can hit control and drag out an edge ring and scale this in and then do this. So now if I do, uh, we don't have an expand, do we? I think, let's hit control shift, nope. Control W here, yeah. Okay, so I can isolate uh, just that edge ring and then we can um, say, again, isolate that edge ring, go in here to polish and then, oh no, we're losing too much volume. Let's take that closed circle, no. Polish by feature would be perfect on this. Smooth, contrast, negative contrast, no, we lose volume, we lose volume. Do we have clay polish? Can we play clay polish just switch there? No, think, think, think. We don't have, we have min connected, but that's just going to be, hmm, well, brute force. You can H polish that. Uh, so essentially, uh, that's how you can kind of start adding geometry. However, uh, you can also, this is something I like to do too, is uh, use back face masking for things like that. So if we want to quickly, you know, add a piece of geometry here, 
go through and um, so we have a piece of geometry here and let's say you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this off hit control W control shift isolate this geometry modified topology <clears throat> delete hidden and then I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna do a geometry close holes now uh, again I can hit W control tap this control drag out an edge ring and then just keep dragging that up I want to or control drag out and actually give myself a little bit of breathing room there you can also with your move brush if you have back face masking turned on you can go through here and uh, you you won't have this um, it'll be over here under auto masking but you can go through here and you can actually pull uh, this out and it'll um, allow you to kind of on very very thin objects let me demonstrate that a little bit better here it can come in handy so if you have a thin object here and it's like oh, I just wish I could pull the blue parts out uh, you don't even have to go in there and mask it I mean you can you can hit W and control tap it and then hit Q and then pull this out uh, but also you can do that with just back face masking turned on so you can go through here and you can add thickness on a thinner mesh just by having back face masking turned on and then you can redyna mesh this and then go through here again we don't have a tremendous amount of polish capabilities but you do have polished brushes so just very quickly go through here and uh, use H polish trim dynamic. So here's we're using H polish here. Yeah, that's got kind of a nice um, Warcraft feel. And then again, trim dynamic to go through here. And you know, you can go from here to here. And then Damien standard or standard brush to kind of go through slash three if you want. You can go through and pull this out. Hold down Alt to pull up to a surface. Uh, H polish or clay brush if you want to kind of go through here and this out and uh, you can also mask and inflate or you can mask and move so we can go through here control tap alt tap here and then just kind of rotate this out like so you don't, you don't have clip but clip you could go through and clean this up pretty quickly um, but for now I guess oh did we get in a weird state so occasionally oh we do have back face masking on that's why occasionally that'll actually happen in Big Z brush, I'll get in a kind of a weird move state. Uh, in that case, it was because of back face masking though. So I'm gonna go in here to H polish and we'll go ahead and polish this out. And there we go. Now we have a little bit more of a hard surfacey kind of thing going. And again, we don't have clip brushes, but you can use, um, there's all sorts of brushes you can use, I suppose. And again, we'll hold down Alt and let go of Alt. So when we get close to this, I'm gonna hold down Alt so I don't start polishing into this over here we can just hold down alt to stop that from happening then let go of alt to polish down like so and then go back in with our move brush if we had move accu um, if you had move accu it would actually be able to pull the corners so that's okay like I said we can just be a little more careful or a little smaller here nothing's impossible it just takes a few more seconds to get to what you're looking for here so anyway and uh, of course that went inside the head because I wasn't paying attention. Let's go in here and hit W and we'll move this out. Uh, and in fact, we do have some deformers in here. So let's go in here and let's say bend arc. And I'm gonna go here and I wanna bend this around the head a little bit. So we're gonna take this and bend it. And then we can change the radius here to kind of sharpen that up a little bit. So we'll kind of bend this around and kind of match the head. Uh, you know what, and even here we can say Spin it around this way and change that radius just a bit. There we go. Kind of fit that head a little bit better. And I'm going to turn X symmetry back on, and I like to do a quick mirror and weld across the X just in case. Anyway, um, let's see. If you don't have Mega been working on, been trying to improve it, I can upload it and have you take a look at it and see what I can be refined. Sure, if you want to. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to open it in ZBrush Core, but we can hop over to the regular ZBrush. Um, you know how to animate your sculpts. I'd love to start learning that eventually. I want to do things like uh, Omega Mark commercials on YouTube. Um, you can kind of animate in ZBrush, but if I'm going to be any doing any, I mean, I'm a terrible animator. I would, well, don't I shouldn't say that. Um, Wonder Ringling, they have amazing animators there. I was not a good animator. I spent more of my time doing modeling and texturing, which kind of explains why I do what I do now. But, uh, however, if you go over here, speaking of Max. Um, ZBrush 2018 series. Here is 96 videos on me just going through this ZBrush Summit presentation that I did. And a big part of this presentation um, is the mech. And here's some animation previs I did, you know, taking my stuff. So these, these sculpts right here, uh, these weapon sculpts are all 
I guess we have rapid iteration weapon. So yeah, here's me testing functionality, you know, just setting hierarchy pivot points in my, uh, um, you can even just do a parent constraint, I suppose, and just setting keyframes, you know, just to kind of figure out how these things are gonna work together. Again, these are very, very quick um, weapons as well. So essentially just weapon concepts like this. We're just talking a couple days to put this together. Um, is it perfectly sub modeled? No, but is it representative? Can you look at this weapon and go, yeah, I see what you're trying to get at there. Yeah, I can see what's happening here. Um, yeah, I get it. I mean, these are pretty zany weapons, so <laughs> maybe you don't get it right at the first glance, uh, but you know, they're pretty sci-fi-y. Uh, but yeah, like this one is pretty standard. You know, there's nothing, there's not a ton going on there. So um, anyway, that's concepting the weapon. Same thing with the met, mech. You know, I concepted a bunch of mech stuff here, a bunch of different um, things, refining characters. And then eventually uh, I would hand this off to the animation team, people who actually do this for a living. And they go through and they do all sorts of cool mech stuff here like this. So they go through and animate and put the dynamics on there and everything, all the chains and stuff kind of jiggle around and they add the weight, you know, all those things moving around. And then they do their show off -y stuff where they kind of go through and make them dance, uh, do a little bit of a moonwalk and all that good stuff. So the real animators do the real work. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, so here is, this is him in Unreal kind of doing his little and again, the most of the stuff that you see in here is concept sketches. Like the, the mech is a concept sketch. All these weapons are concept sketches. Some of it's better built than others. Um, yeah. And it's all in Unreal. Super loose, pretty concepty. Um, although he was he was done a lot, he was box modeled quite a bit. Um, but anyway, yeah. Animation and mech and stuff like that. It is right now 7.30 where I'm at. Uh, Polished by Features is going to be under Deformation Polished by Features, but that's going to be in Big ZBrush. This is ZBrush Core. Um, I didn't model the entire scene. Uh, Dave Ansira modeled, uh, Dave Ansira and JP Eaton modeled a lot of that, uh, most of the, all of the environment. Uh, I did the mech, the mech and the, character and the weapon. Tony Reynolds did the character face and hair. Um, yeah, I think that was that was it as far as that team, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, so we got kind of a thing going on in here. Um, let's see if we can't, you know, if they're, uh, I'm going to grab my Metropolis back up here. She's got kind of a, she's got kind of a crazy you know, and, and also while I'm working on stuff, I like to work on things a little bit separately. And I'm going to use, instead of masking, I'm just going to use visibility. So I'm just going to go through here. Oh, we still have. Turn that off. Uh, so I can hold down control shift. And if I want to grab a little bit more, a little bit less, I can go through here and I can uh, do that here. And then I can say geometry modified topology. Um, split, not geometry modified topology, uh, subtool split hidden. So now. Uh, the head is split off in its own thing, and then I can go through here and I can just Dynamesh this result. And I, and I can change this Dynamesh separate from the body. So if I want to sculpt on the body at a lower resolution and on the head at a higher resolution, I am free to do so. I can always Dynamesh them back, but since this is going to be a little bit more mech-y, uh, maybe I don't. You know, maybe I don't. So this will kind of be this. So uh, let's go through and let's do, I don't know, we'll go into our clay brush here. I'm going to raise the res constantly wanting to use my custom menu. Uh, it is built into my brain. Let's go in here to uh, Dynamesh and we'll crank that resolution up just a bit, turn blur off. There we go. Uh, maybe one more. Is it doing anything? There we go. Oops. And uh, yeah, so now we can go through here and if I wanted to do like a little bit of a bodysuit. We can go through here. And again, Damien's standard brush to kind of, and again, I'm just sketching. So this would be like me with a pencil going like, where would I want the bodysuit to go? You can use um, poly paint. So you can actually go in here and you can paint, you know, where you want your sculpt to be first. So we have colorize turned on. So very quickly you can go in here and colorize and you can say, you know what, give me, I'm actually, I actually am gonna go in here and paint. Like, okay, I want this kind of shape to be out here. You can use masking, uh, whatever you want here. Go in here and sketch it first. We'll kind of have this shape here, and then it'll go maybe around here. 
and then this will go up around the neck like so and that'll be that initial shape that I'm looking for uh, yeah and then you could just use this as a guide and then we can go in here to mRGB turn that RGB intensity down color fill object and tap that oops let's go back up here to white color fill object it will kind of dumb that down just a little bit and then we'll go back into our standard brush here oops let's go into solo mode and we can oh, we have uh, brush alpha turned on still not stroke oh awesome thank you so much oh my back is starting to go got a coffee delivery hold on get me awake um so now we have this which is going to kind of dictate let's take our focal shift back to zero here so now we can have a little bit of a guide let's turn that z intensity down there we go in this case i may want to turn on l sim or not l sim um lazy mouse so underneath stroke again lazy mouse turns on crank that lazy radius up a little bit and then now we can go through here and get a nice clean line so you can kind of again you can use poly paint to kind of plan it out first and then you can go through there and kind of dial it in and then if you want to turn the poly paint off just go ahead and turn that off and now you can just see your sculpt um, and see that's when i'm on my channel i do more explaining than like really designing i'm not really thinking about like oh this would be amazing oh i got a tangent there dang it you know uh so that's that's part of the, my problem too is uh i do more workflow and technique than i do like let's let's explore um you know making this really a successful design but hey, at least you get technique out of it. So I'm happy. Hopefully you guys are happy. You get the gist of it, you know. Do do a better design than I'm going to do. Um, really take your time and think about it and be mindful and look up, get reference. That's another thing I don't really do unless I have something specific I want to hit. Um, you know, so this can be the start of our uh, bodysuit here. And then through here, we can kind of give indications of, you know, a little bit of, that's another thing too I didn't even think about. It. We have project in here. That could be a problem if we're going to zero mesh. If we don't have project, which it doesn't look like we do, um, I would say zero mesh early. Get your basic volumes, then zero mesh, and then sculpt out your detail stuff. Because yeah, if you if you can't at any time, like in ZBrush, you can zero mesh at any time and project your details back, no problem. And here, I would suggest maybe going through and getting your getting your details early because yeah if you go through here and you do a bunch of stuff and then you have to zero mesh it it's gonna be it might be kind of tough to get your details back uh, so again we'll go back through here we're going to solo mode so along the back of the neck here let's go into Damien standard get a little bit of a tighter uh, crease here so we can go through here and hold down alt and let go of alt and you can uh, maybe do a little bit of an inflate through here and again we're just giving like little indications that there's some wrinkling going on, on the back of the neck here wherever it makes sense you know, uh, the armpit a little bit here, over the shoulder maybe, and then uh, back up to the head. And again, we are working at a uh, a different resolution. It looks like we some of these feature uh, tools and techniques you're going to use in here may cause you to technically lose a little bit of symmetry. So we're going to go back in here and modify topology, mirror, and weld. Uh, X symmetry still turned on. Uh, so now we can go through here and let's go back into our standard brush turn off lazy mouse and again we're just going to kind of sculpt so first we may want to sculpt let's do a um, i have some just some stuff i'm trying to see if i can get it oh there's a good three quarter that'll work Okay, so um, go in here with our clay brush, and again, we'll we'll start we'll we'll start uh, kind of dialing in uh, a bit of a head. We already have our our uh, proportions already kind of worked out. We you know halfway down the head is going to be our eyes, uh, brow line, nose line, chin line are all going to be kind of done for us. So really, we just need to worry about going through here and. You know, we can dial in some features here. So I'm going to hold down, I'm using the Damien standard. I'm going to hold down Alt and let go of Alt. We'll kind of, you know, pull under that upper lip and go in here with our move brush. Make sure we're working in the round here. In fact, let's go into solo mode. You know, we have draft to the face here. Here's the eyeballs, nose, Damien standard. We'll go through here and we'll start refining this face. Uh, and this is all stuff, obviously, the, the base, base brushes that we're using 
you could use in uh, ZBrush Core Mini, but there's no hotkeys and it's gonna have Sculptors Pro turned on. Uh, so again, totally doable, but um, you may, I was having, a, I'll be honest, I was having a little bit of a tough time given all that, but in ZBrush Core, uh, it's it's damn close to ZBrush in a lot of ways. So I think you might have a little bit of an easier time transitioning, you know, and it's got a limited tool set by design because, you know, it's just, you don't want to get full ZBrush just yet. You want to dip your toe in. There's a there's plenty of functionality in ZBrush Core, tons. So uh, yeah, we've got a head here and we got our lips and we got semblance of eyes going here. So now this is where we can start maybe metropolising it up. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit narrower here. Good enough, man. So now um, we can start modifying the planes of the face here. I'm going to go back to my metropolis thing here. And we're just going to kind of do a little bit of sculpting. So again, uh, Damien Standard is going to start looking like an Oscar statue, maybe. So we're going to emphasize some of these features here. And again, I'm just using Damien Standard to pull out. Uh, I'm going to raise this resolution up just a tiny bit, blur down to zero. Again, we're just going to kind of cut in a little bit here. That basic eye shape. And I don't need... I don't think I need lazy radius turned on for this. I don't, I'm just kind of doing smaller shapes here. So we can hold down alt here. So let's see, is this one actually looking at this, looking at her, she kind of has an eyelid built in and then it kind of cuts in here. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can't keep some of it, but some of it I may want to update here just a little bit. You know what? I am going to turn lazy mouse on just a little bit on this Damien standard brush. Again, so cutting in with the Amy brush, holding down Alt, pulling out, and then uh, you know if we want to put in a feature here, we can start with maybe the clay build up if we want to go and maybe pull out an area that goes here, and then it's going to kind of go up, maybe flare out a little bit like so, and then we can go through again H polish to kind of define those volumes of the those edges a little bit better like so, and then just go back in here with the clay brush is a little bit of a softer touch. And since we don't have a lot of brush options in this one, um, we can go in here to clay brush and maybe even put in an alpha 06 to kind of tighten that up a little bit maybe. And you can also use, like I said, mask and transpose. So we can also, you know, mask an area. Um, See along the chin here, maybe you go through here and you can mask. An area, control tap to invert that, and then W. You can go through here and you can like rotate this down or rotate it out a little bit, but you can kind of play around with this just a bit. Tapping S, letting go of S. I'm just gonna because this is a dynamash, I can just pull these things in. So, you know, I want this to kind of maybe pull out and then go in a little bit. And again, just using our move brush, transpose, whatever you want to do. Control tap to invert your mask. You can go through and you can clean this up a little bit. And that could be our shape. Control drag to redynamesh. And let's go ahead and raise that resolution up just a little bit more. And then again, just kind of refine this. So we can actually continue this. Uh, right into the ear so we can take this and just go straight over with that clay brush here and uh, again clean it up with a little H polish hold down alt we can kind of merge these together in one nice smooth shape here if we want and then uh, hold down alt over here so we can H polish out to this point and then uh, move brush if you need to work out any of these wiggles in here And then again, Damien Standard, if you want to kind of refine, you know, this here. And if you want to, again, this is where Move Accu would come into play. But in here, we have to go through and just kind of make this a little bit more of a corner, maybe. And then go back in here with your H-Polish brush and just emphasize 
emphasize yeah that transition that you're trying to make there we go so uh now we got this and then we go back in here with our trim dynamic and we can say you know what this here we want this to be a little bit of a softer touch down here I'm gonna go back in with our H polish brush and clean that up. And there you go. Move brush to kind of unwobble it a little. Again, it's a little more tedious maybe than uh, some other techniques, but I think it'll get us to where we need to go. You know, I'm looking at the Metropolis one. It's not, it's very very flowy, organic-y shapes. So we don't want to do a ton of corners here. Not that we're really necessarily doing exactly that, obviously, but keeping that in, keeping that same idea. And in fact, in here, looks like she's got a little bit more arch to her eyebrows. So we can go through here. Let's go into our clay brush, hold down Alt, and then let go of Alt. And we can kind of just start taking this and kind of sculpting out a little bit. And then again, H polish, just to kind of clean that up. Fix these transitions. Here we got the head thing. Again, we can have a little bit more control if we go through here and maybe mask. And transpose as opposed to trying to do everything with your brushes. Um, pick and choose your battles. You can make it a really big polished brush so you don't get the wobbly on the features or on the broad surfaces there. Good enough and then for the nose she has a very uh like i said oscar statue style nose here so what we can do is again just to find these plane changes go back in here with h polish brush and that even look like she has nostrils to speak of we can add some we'll add we'll add a little bit of a nostril there and then again h polish to kind of go through I don't think those eye bags are helping too much there. And it's kind of interesting. There's, there's something interesting about it that I like. I'm just not, I'm not um, executing it on it all that well. And again, if we want to put actual eyes in here, uh, that's where we can go and do the insert eyeball, eyeballs like we did before. Uh, but in here, I'm gonna make a really big Damien Sander, very, very light, shape and again we're just going to kind of hint at kind of a cheekbone transition let's turn down that z intensity on that clay brush and turn that alpha off very soft transition and then again h polish that back there we go and again me trying to box model this would be an absolute nightmare uh, but me going in here and just doing this very fun very easy and now i know exactly where to put my points if i want to go back through and rebuild this as a sub D mesh or whatever. Close enough. Um. <laughs> okay, let me get caught up here. Uh, yeah, and also ask a Z brush too. There's some, some good stuff on there. Uh, boy, I'm whoa, I'm way behind. Um. Uh, when's the right time to subdivide a model compared to dynameshing a model? Uh, like in regular ZBrush, you can do it at any time. Um, in ZBrush Core, I would do it. I would zero mesh early. As long as you're not going to do anything crazy like this. Oops, BSH. If you're not going to do anything like this, um, you should be fine to like zero mesh and then just start dialing in your details. It's just a nice, it's a slightly nicer, more controlled mesh than um, dynamesh, which is great for ideation, but maybe not so great for some of the um, technical stuff. You still read to them? Maybe something else read to apologize. Sculpts, um, read topo seems to be a hang up for me. Yeah, and if you can get faster at read apologizing, um, in fact, like uh, one one good one one example I always like to bring up is um, so I teach at CG Master Academy, and this person does too, uh, Ben Ert. So if you look at this, 
and you look at all the hard surface stuff where you're just like, whoa, look at the look at this. That is ridiculous. Sub D model master. Um, this entire thing, like basically everything you see here, give or take, you know, a few little nuts and bolts in here um, was all done in ZBrush. And then it was just hand rebuilt um, for a lot of the stuff, you know, same thing. Uh, and you can see a lot in the shape language too. So like getting your idea out quickly in ZBrush and then going through, there you go. Uh, why can't I scroll? Jeez. Uh, and then going through and rebuilding everything as a sub D mesh um, is one way to go about it. And that's how you, you can do this. You can, you basically concept the entire thing in ZBrush and then you rebuild the entire thing as a sub D mesh. Um, and then what I would do is like this guy, uh, like Ben, get really fast and good at retopologizing your ZBrush um, concept ideation sculpts because that's exact that's essentially what this thing is is a, a zebrush sculpt that was been that's been retop all the pieces have been retopologized um, into a sub D mesh so that's it now that's an option that's not the only way to do it but that is a kind of a brute force way you can kind of again get your idea out quickly and then rebuild what you need uh, and again if I miss something I apologize there's um, a bunch of stuff here I missed um, Uh, let's see, grandma tests. Yeah, it, project whenever whenever you can, uh, especially in the regular ZBrush. Cool. Thank you, um, the Boinding Bot, for the kind words. Yes, that's a good point too. Is you can always you can always uh, duplicate this off too. You can do variants. So if I want to duplicate this off, and through it'll turn off our original head and it's like you know what i want to go through here and like maybe pinch these features a little bit more you know give her a little bit more of a, a sharper feature look here we'll go ahead and pinch this in maybe use a move brush a little bit more and then you can even you can do let's see okay shift s isn't in here but um you can very quickly we can turn off visibility and now you can just switch between these heads and see which one you like like better um, so in this case I maybe want to kind of make some slight modifications. Again, super fast, super easy. <laughs> hey, Christian, how's it going? Oh, man, I'm getting too old to stand up. For I stayed up all day yesterday and then this morning, and I'm just hurting. Um, yeah, email Pixelogic and also ask ZBrush on Twitter. They can sometimes get some good stuff going. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Nikita. Yeah, if you have that, just let me know. Cool. Uh, <laughs> mm. That's actually, um, speaking of photorealistic, um, I work with this guy. Whoops. There we go. Um, <laughs> he's been doing some stuff uh, recently at work that is ridiculous. Uh, all Unreal stuff too. So um, yeah, he's a monster when it comes to that. Uh, like you guys were saying that hyper, sorry, I keep hitting that thing, that hyper real stuff. I don't think it is, Paige. And likenesses and stuff like that too. Um, do, how can I improve my sculpts uh, as art fundamentals necessary anatomy for example absolutely and I, that's another thing too that I wish I had spent more time uh, kind of doing and in fact I'm trying to think if there's anything in here I can let's see go to solo mode here yeah let's go ahead and we'll stick with this one for now um, oh, and the original Z sphere we don't really need anymore either. I don't think so. We'll go ahead and delete that out of there. And if we did, you know, I can actually maybe do this. So in ZBrush, let's hit Control W, Control Shift. I'm going to grab maybe these pieces here. Hit Control W, and then W. Um, let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center. Hit Y, Control Tap to unmask this. Let's hit E and Control Drag out. 
and turn on LSIM. Okay, that kind of worked. And then let's go ahead and say, scale this back down. Okay, yeah. So you can kind of add, you can kind of box model using transpose in this a little bit. Of course, you can't crease anything, so that's the result you're going to get, but you can kind of do it. You can add more edge loops in there using the same transpose method, control drag just a little bit closer a few more times. Um, yeah, retopologize. Uh, re I think I want to say, I don't, I don't really remember what Ben used. Um, but again, you, you can just get good and fast if, you, you, if you're a Quadra guy, if you're a Moto guy, XSI, Blender, however you want to plot your points. That, that, that's the part that's not rocket science. Um, it's just a little bit tedious, but put on your favorite um, Star Trek series. I'm halfway through Deep Space Nine for the first time. I think I'm still a next generation guy, but <laughs> yeah, Matt. Uh, yeah, Z Modeler is not in not in ZBrush Core, so we're we're hanging out in ZBrush Core today. Let's kind of go over that. But uh, anyway, uh, as far as the interface here, we got our docking palettes, brush menus, navigation, light box is in here. We, we were digging through that earlier, so you got some light box stuff in here. Uh, thumbnail cam view, brushes, symmetry, Sculptor's Pro, backface masking, uh, insert meshes we've already done. Uh, for example, like in here, you can go through here with these insert mesh brushes that come with it, and we can just drag out and then go in here again, split, unmask points, W, uh, Alt tap here, and then we can just go through and we can and so to keep LSIM on so when we scale, it'll scale on its own local axis here. So now we can go through and we can kind of play around with that a little bit. Now in this instance, we may have to go back in here. This is kind of a, what is this, Power Rangers looking? Kind of a mecha Transformers eyeball thing here. So we're going to go ahead and mass this out, Control tab to invert, and then W. We can just pull these back here. So now we get a little bit more space for eyeball. Now we may have to change the shape to kind of accommodate a little bit more of an eyeball shape. And the Metropolis Lady did have uh, a round eyeball. Let's go ahead and push that back a little bit more. So, oh, another thing too to keep in mind is when we inserted this, it's not Dynamesh. However, we inserted it on a Dynamesh object and split it off. So it is going to retain those settings from the original subtool that you drew it out on. If you don't like that, just turn off Dynamesh. You can hit D for dynamic. And then again, that'll smooth it out for us. And then we'll Alt tap back here. So now. We have the kind of the best of both worlds. So we're going to go down here and we'll kind of, again, make this socket a little bit more accommodating for an eyeball. Um, but yeah, ZBrush Core, it's fun. You got tons of, tons of options. I am pleasantly surprised by it, I'll, I'll be honest. Does it kind of hamstring me a little bit? Yes, but uh, it is an interesting, uh, challenge. So if you just need basic functionality and you don't want to shell out for the, the full-fledged ZBrush just yet, it's a great way to kind of get, get your feet wet, learn some basic stuff. And uh, if we want to 3D print this thing, let's go through here. Uh, like I think I messed that up. Yeah, because I can't. Let's see if we can tighten up these edges. Again, problem solving. So W, Y, control, uh, tap this. We're gonna hit uh, W, control, tap uh, to bring in, oops, control, shift. Control, shift to pull out an edge ring and then hit E and control, drag to kind of pull in an edge ring. So that now we're just kind of building in some control loops here. Um, trying to think let's see, i guess we can do it here too let's give it a shot i'm going to take this here control tap invert w i'm going to do um, tap here control drag out control shift drag out an edge ring here and then trying to think the best way to and scale it. As, as I was creating this, I probably should have stopped and added more edge rings, but you know what? We'll, we'll have a softer transition there. <laughs> D for dynamic. This is going to be uh, the result. We can go down here to dynamic 
and we can say smooth subdiv of three up more, and then we can go ahead and say apply. So that's gonna be our actual mesh here. Um, another thing to keep in mind, let's, uh, oh, we do have quick save. So I'm gonna quick save real quick. It's up there at the top. It's nine is the hotkey for that. Um, there is micropoly in here. So if we go through and um, let's say we want to do this. I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm going to grab just a section in here. We maybe want to put in some like hex, like a hex pattern or something. We want to build in a little vent or something or like a venting. So when she gets sweaty, it'll <laughs> vent out of her back or something. I don't know. I'm being stupid, but um, we have this area here that we've duplicated off. We're going to go ahead and say, Again, control W to isolate. Oh, you know what? We're gonna use our we're gonna use our extraction trick. I'm gonna go down here to geometry to smooth those that edges out. Uh, down here to not geometry, extraction. I'm gonna take thickness down to zero and then smoothness uh, open circle. And then I'm just gonna hit extract and then accept. So that I go ahead and give me a clean result. And then in here we can go ahead and say zero mesh or half. And that'll give us again. Very nice clean result here. And on here, we do have, interestingly enough, of all the things, we can turn on dynamic, uh, turn smooth subdiv down to zero, and we have micro poly. So we can turn micro poly on. Um, and you can go through here. And I don't think you can control, yeah, you can't control click. So it, I think it says in the documentation, you can control click and you can alt click and it'll go through and spit it out, but it really, it doesn't. So uh, maybe that's something they'll add in the future. Uh, but in here, we can go through and we can use this to kind of, let me see if I have anything, is there a hex plane here? Let's see, can we align these? Let's see, something like this maybe? Uh, some of these meet up a little better than others, let's see. And this is kind of a weird shape too, but uh, anyway, that's a quick easy way to kind of get you know, again, those hex tiling patterns. If you did want to add thickness, there is no dynamic thickness on here, but you can apply and we can try going back in here to extract, again, smooth down to zero. Um, thickness, maybe a little bit lower. That's fine, say okay. Oops, um, accept. So now we have like a little hex tiling pattern back here. backspace mask on right yeah so again just a little bit of a, a thing you can do and then back here on our uh, sculpt we can go through here and we can add a little bit of a an indication that you know this is in our let's do this hold down shift turn all this off uh, this we don't need anymore and then turn this on so we're just oops the extraction we don't need there we go so with just these two showing might be a little bit easier. And again, we can tap L to turn on lazy radius. Now we can go through here and again, kind of build up. Hold down Alt. So that could be a way to kind of go through and do that. Let's go ahead and read Dynamesh here. Smooth out. Boy, I'm just having a hard time getting a smooth line out of this today. That's a me thing, not a not a ZBrush thing. But like I said, you can go through here and you can kind of even these out. But anyway, uh, there's that. Hold down Shift, turn on the eyeballs, turn everything back on. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, Lazy Race, we're talking about floor grid. Uh, we did talk about you know the ability to kind of do see through and bring in a, an image. You can also go in here to the floor. And underneath the draw, you can turn, you can import images in front, down, up, down, left, right. So you can you can Google those um, and bring in your own reference images to match. Uh, file and dues we already went over. Quick save we just went over. Navigation camera. Uh, you do have the universal camera in here. So the perspective underneath draw, you're going to see. Um, here's the universal camera. Cool. Um, and in fact, I bet you I can even take this. If you do have, you know, the bridge and key shot and stuff, you can just toss this right into key shot if you wanted. Um, full micro poly, subtool mesh extract. Oh, stretch. There we go. So now we want to do a, um, let's 
Sorry, you can't see everything that's going on here, but. Transparency distance, put that at one here. Ooh, that's a little high. There we go. Edit, preferences, save. We go in here to lighting, turn on acoustics. There we go. You can, you can render it out of beer if you wanted to, all your models in here. Um, of course you can do this with, uh, let's see. Plastic as well, and every sub-tool and stuff will all be uh, different. So that's easy. And then also, if we wanted to, um, we do have a 3D print hub in here. You can import export to STL files. In fact, let's go down here to merge visible. It's going to pop out its own subtool real quick. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to say, oh, before we do that, let's see, delete that. Um, I want to, all my dynamic stuff, I want to apply. So dynamic apply, alt tap, dynamic apply, alt tap, that's already applied. So now when I do a merge visible, there's my merged. I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and make this voxelize this all into one object here. And because they're all one subtool now, I can go in here just really quickly to DynaMesh, crank up the resolution quite a bit, turn on Dyna, more than that, DynaMesh this. And then if I want to lower this, uh, Z plugin decimation masters in here. So I can just say, you know what, give me 150K. It'll go ahead and pre process and then dump this down to 150K. So I'm just kind of getting this ready for 3D print. Give it a second. And then in regular ZBrush, you could go tool export and export as an STL or OBG or whatever. In here, cool. So now we're dropped down to 150K. Looks the same, just a little bit lighter weight. And then we're going to go in here to file. Um, we're not going to be able to save, but we can go in here to Z plugin. Um, export to STL. Let's drop that right on our desktop here. Go ahead and load this up real quick, maybe. Hold on just a second. There we go. So bring in your favorite slicer here, and we're going to go ahead and say, um, open on our desktop, our STL here. Or this thing, I don't even remember what that was. Um, so here it is. So here's our little print here. And so we'll go ahead and uh, whatever's going to make the most sense. Uh, you know what? In fact, we can even, let's see, move, rotate, scale to fit. There, that'll fit on the bed. Um, and then if we want to make this hollow, since we don't have a DynaMesh with shell option or like Boolean stuff, you can just do that in here. So you can literally just say um, hollow it out. Two millimeters, probably fine. I'll go through. It'll do the hollowing process for me. Actually, one, one millimeter, 1 1.5 is probably better. A lot of solid pieces in there. But anyway, um, you do you can go through and hollow that out. And if even if you want to you know, poke a hole, oh yeah, these things aren't gonna <laughs> these things aren't gonna print very well back here. Those little actual geometry hex things. So that's something you need to watch out for. But uh, if you wanted to go through here and um, add a hole for like resin to come out or something, you can pop that out, and then the hole. The plug will 3D print as well. And then what else can we do? We can go over here to our supports. We'll go ahead and add our supports here so that while it prints, it'll be supported. And then as we go through here, let's see. Top, middle, yes, at all. Oh, we need to select this one first, add all these. There we go. So there's our print supports. Of course, you can drop these in manually as you want. Um, there you go. So all within ZBrush Core, no problemo, easy as pie. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just space maps. Uh, I heard it makes programs a lot easier because it's the same navigation all the programs support it. Yeah, um, and I wish there was more support. I, I hate navigating in engines. Uh, I'm not used to like WASD navigation for anything. So when I have to go through and like walk through an engine, or they have every every program has its own like Fusion 360 and engines. Um, probably what I would use it for the most. Fusion 360, I definitely use it for. And then if there was more engine support like UE4 and Unity, 
Um, just using that to navigate around engines would be much, much better for me. Um, okay, um, I've linked that mech I did in chat. If you can check and see if it can be refined. I don't see it. I don't know if it... I don't see it. I'm, I'm using Restream, so I don't know. Air station. I don't see a link in here. I don't know if it blocked it or whatever. Oh, there it is. And then in this one, okay, so let's go ahead and say, okay, we're good working on this one. We're gonna go ahead and save as. Um, right on our desktop is probably fine. Oh, no, wait, we want the, we want the full thing over here. So instead of saving our decimated version, I'm gonna go down here to our subtool version, file, save as, and you can save these as GIFs and uh, whatever, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a Z project here. And we'll go ahead and unload this and we'll load up real ZBrush, uh, not real ZBrush, big ZBrush. Uh, if you were to buy a build or buy a PC today, what would you prioritize spec-wise for best ZBrush performance? Um, it's hard for me to just prioritize for ZBrush. Um, I can link you to here. This is what I use for as my multi-purpose here. Here's my updated workstation here. You can check this out. So I'll go ahead and share, copy. Um, I, I, I do some pretty taxing stuff across the board, GPU and CPU, and you want a nice ecosystem with all that stuff. You don't want to bottleneck your awesome components, uh, ideally. Um, so, you know, I'm doing the, um, I got, right now I got a 2080 Ti, and uh, I'm not about to try to buy a three series right now. And then, um, you know, using my Ryzen uh, 3970X Threadripper for my CPU stuff. Um, I've had every generation of Threadripper and I haven't had a problem, but also if you're going to buy, I don't know, don't don't skimp out too much on your motherboard and your power supply and your RAM. Um, of course, the more I say that, the more I'm like, well, you just get really expensive everything and that's, you know, you get, you, you get what you paid for, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's uh, that, that's what I have anyway. And I, like I said, I've had every every generation of Threadripper 1, 2, the 1950X, 2990WX, and the 3970X, and I have had zero problems. And it, boy, does it ever come in handy when I'm doing video stuff and particle stuff and simulation stuff and rendering stuff. And also the um, the motherboards are always the motherboards are really good, and uh, the bandwidth is really good. You may not need all that if you just need a decent amount of cores and some nice high clock speed, um, 5900X, 30. They're, 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 there's just other options. The more the gaming CPUs are probably fine. Um, and I don't know that Intel has a whole lot of competition on that front. They, you might be able to find them easier, but um, I think price performance wise, not so much anymore. But what I'm looking for is my downloads. Where did I put that? Oh, did I open up ZBrush Core? No. Yeah, real ZBrush, sorry. The ZBrush Core version cannot be opened by files. Okay, shoot, well I'm glad I got Core. Wait, what is going on here? Okay, fine, let me see, load tool, file open. Did it do something weird? Hold on. That's weird. It just wants to open up and um, let's see document back and turn this down just a little bit here. Uh, yeah, so I mean, basically what I would do is think about, let's see if I can, uh, when you're thinking about like ergonomics and stuff, I would say, you know what, let's load a tool from a project and let's go in here to uh, ZBrush 2021 Z. Boy, I'm having a hard time. Project Z projects here. Uh, we'll go ahead and load up the uh, female Z project. So that way I can go through here and I can just insert here. And then I'm going to go up to or down to the female here. We're going to go down here to unif uh, deformation, unify, get that a little bit closer. 
and then kind of position this in there so that that way as I'm adding stuff it's always it's always good when you're designing stuff just to keep in mind like hey you know what something is probably going to be in if, if it's not if it's not a spacesuit and it is just a robot then I would say um, indicate that a little bit more visually like go through here and like put some holes in it or um, move some stuff around so you realize that you know there's not a human in there uh, there's actually uh, it's actually just a robot piece that might just might read a little bit better uh, but that way while I'm going through here I can kind of determine like okay it's always fun and it helps you problem solve if you think through a problem uh, and do a little bit of storytelling. So in this instance, it's like, okay, she can't see out of here. Do I need to have some indication that there is ways for her to see? Are there cameras available out here so that it can feed an image uh, to her eyeballs so she can see? Or, or is it gonna be like um, the Lord of the Rings, Mouth of Sauron, where he's just got a plate over his face that he can't see through and he's just like, hey man, that's his deal. He doesn't see, he only talks. Um, that's interesting, you know, but make sure that you're making that decision consciously and not accidentally. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything in here. And really for me, most of it is like, what, what are you trying to, what are you trying to tell? What story are you trying to tell visually storytelling wise? Um, and a lot of that's going to be like what, um, it's, it's kind of a functionality thing, you know? So if you got to, Take this thing on off. I mean, I guess you can start two ways. You can you can do purely aesthetic, just like thumbnail sketching, and then you can also start thinking about functionality further down, or you can start mind mapping early and going, what what am I trying to build? And then I'm gonna aesthetically start, you know, start functionality and then add aesthetics later. Um, in this instance, you know, just looking at the thumbnail, it's very round, it's kind of beetle-like. So if that's the shape you want to go with, you know, that's that's kind of uh that's the feeling I'm getting from this. It kind of goes through here. It's very organic shaped, you know? So this is where I would start playing with like, what, what am I trying to message? So this is right now it's very round. So I may play into that is okay. What's a very round armored mech? What type of work would that do? And that would dictate what I would put on here. Um, is it going to have big round shoulder pads? Is it going to be kind of an undersea type of look where it's going to have, you know, maybe a big uh, port for the, the, the face? here you know and now and then this is just a way to easily visually encode uh, design language into what you're working on because this type of thing has already been done in the 1800s you know so people are already um, familiar with so, hey look at this we can z modeler stuff oops let's go ahead and marry well sorry i didn't realize i was off axis there but basically you go through here and then auto groups and then W control tap this, uh, W control bring this in and, and set, and set, Q mesh, ball your ball, hold down shift. You know, um, that that looks like something I can, I can immediately go, I can see this and be like, oh, this looks like a deep sea. Uh, diving type of thing, but it's updated for sci-fi, you know? So you're, again, you're, you're using that encoded language to your advantage, like things that are already familiar to the human eye. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to do a lot of explaining visually to indicate, you know, what's exactly going on here. This is the only reason I bring that up. So if you can look at something and be inspired by something that already has design encoded into it, um, a lot of those questions that you're gonna be answering and a lot of what you wanna make will be a lot easier to determine rather than you know, just kind of making shapes and moving stuff around until it makes sense. Now, granted, I'm not, I'm certainly not the um, foremost on design uh, in that regard. Uh, another thing to think about too is if it is something with like, oh, I need a rubber bodysuit underneath so I can articulate, um, you know, and if I, if I rotate this arm up, the clavicles are gonna kind of hit this here. So you may need to think about, and this has also helped your design out too. It'll make it feel better because then somebody looks at this and goes, "Hey, you know what? There's something about this design. Um, I can't quite put my finger on it. It just feels weird." Then it's probably something to do with, you know, like, "Hey, this technically she wouldn't be able to bend her knees or her arms or anything." So you can kind of back this off a little bit. And also, when she goes to turn her head, um, we can hit W. We can test functionality, move multiple, Control Shift drag over all these top parts here, and then let's go ahead and say. Um, Turn off X symmetry, let's go to unmash my center. So if we want to kind of put this where the neck pivot would be, 
So now control shift, let's go back to select rectangle here. Oh, that's our head. So now we can kind of go through here and we can be like, oh, there's a head in there. I'll have to go check that out, but um, yeah. So immediately, as soon as it turns ahead left or right, it's gonna hit. And then of course, up and down, you wanna look down at stuff, you wanna look up at stuff. So this isn't too bad. Uh, and this might be need to be uh, moved out just a tiny bit, but yeah, just stuff like that. Let's go ahead and turn on the X symmetry here. A little more breathing room. And then also layering up that functionality where essentially, you know, put on a rubber bodysuit underneath there. So you can kind of say like, okay, first they get in the bodysuit and then they go to the machine that's gonna put their armor in, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's just more of that visual encoding stuff that uh, kind of gets you, it, again, it's gonna answer those questions a little bit faster and it's gonna make that problem solving a little bit easier. Um, again, just telling yourself that story in your head as you work. Um, is there a longer video on the bird robot? There's really not. I didn't really record the whole thing because I was just kind of having fun, but I'll do a mech something or other um, at some point. If we go through all those things. Um, cool, awesome. Thank you, uh, Sarah. Or, uh, hopefully the videos are helping you and the students. Um, Terminator Ape Skull on the station for download. I'd love to 3D print it and have it on my desk. Yeah. Um, I think it might be somewhere. I'll, um, you know what? Hell, let's just do it now. You want the, you want the high-res file? Let's see, recording. Let me drop this down here. Well, that was under, ooh, that's an old one. So I'm going to go into my archives here and re legacy recording and that was a binator z tool date modified bake decimated bake full low working 815 let's see here delete delete okay you think you would use something like this um all right let me just save this out real quick Save as desktop. Next goal, I'll drop it into Google Drive real quick and I'll send you a link. Um, give me a second. Next goal, Z. And there it is. Share. Get link, copy link, done. There you go, everybody. Here's the next goal if you wanna play around with it. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all all the pieces in there. You may have to like, you know, go through here and turn on dynamic for those little pipes and stuff on the side, but. Uh, video uh, workshop be on your YouTube. Yep, it should be on my YouTube right now, actually. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Cool, thanks everybody. I'll go ahead and hop out. It's 818. I have to, I gotta get my day started. One of these days I'm gonna retire and uh, we'll just stream all day long. But in the meantime, I gotta, I gotta put food on the table. So thanks again. And um, uh, I'm trying to think of the next stream. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. At the, very, at, the, at the very least we'll stream next month, the usual Tuesday, Thursday combo. Um, but in the meantime, <laughs> Yes, yeah, Austin home prices are nuts right now. So if you want to move to Austin, do it now because holy moly, is it ever, is it ever going nuts? Cool, thanks everybody. Uh, I'll let you get back to your regularly scheduled programming and uh, I'll 